And now, to the millions and millions of listeners and viewers all across the world, Dale. it's the That's Not Christian Podcast. Come on, let's go. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, y'all? It's your boy, Switch. I'm here with your man, Jimmy. I'm here with your man, Jay. And I'm here with your man, Ant. And I'm here with a very, very special guest, Monster Tarva. What's going hey, on? Hey, welcome hey. to the show. What's going on? What's going on? What's, what's, going up, on? what's, up? what's going on, fellas? How was y'all weekend? Yo, hey, weekend was good. good. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah. blessed. Cor- Corona's over. Nah, yeah, that's right. not over. What are you talking about? <laughs> you didn't see those people in the streets? <laughs> oh, yeah. The Democrats was like, this don't exist no more. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> They're like, Biden start. won. It don't exist no more. Nah, bro. <laughs> they, they, they pushing that vaccine now. They're yeah. like 90% eff- effective, but they ain't tested it on no, no humans yet. No, and what we, you mean? Yes, they did. Who? They ain't tested it on no, no humans. I, I, no, no. I, I, read, I read on the... So I'm Reddit. Obviously, right, there's a, the post... There was uh, three people that their top comment was, hey, I'm one of the testers, and they explained, like, their process. Or okay. Okay. Because yeah, yeah. I was watching the news this morning, and they said it hadn't been tested on anybody yet. So it's oh, the same one? Weird. Is it the Pfizer? Uh, yeah, it's the Pfizer one. I okay. think I even posted the, the link from there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, My yeah. bad. On, in our chat, of course. I got, yeah, I got yeah. a question. I'm not taking it, though. So yeah, I, go I, I, I got a question when it comes to that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Why would you have to take the vaccine if you've never tested positive? That's what I'm mm-hmm. saying. Oh. Hmm. But here's, a, here's, a, here's, a, here's another thing, though. Here's another thing. The test yeah. not only tests for Corona, uh, the coronavirus, right? COVID-19, but it tests for mm-hmm. all COVIDs. So you test positive, but you don't know if for it tests a positive. Yeah, but you don't know yeah. if it's specifically for COVID-19. So you right. taking the vaccine. You might have had the flu. And now oh. you're going to get the, the coronavirus vaccine because well, you had the flu. Because But doesn't a vaccine study. prevent you from catching from if you were exposed? from catching no no oh. what it does is it makes you it makes you sick so you don't get sick so basically right. there's some studies that show that the flu vaccine that they're pushing now makes you more susceptible to right. covid 19. right wow. but they're, they're pushing yeah they're pushing flu vaccines and other i'm seeing commercials for vaccines like crazy and so they're, they're social conditioning they're yeah. conditioning let me stop that's what you hear. That's for, the type man. of that's the type of talk we need, man. That's what, that's what we be doing. That's don't, what don't we put do. Put that battery in my pack, boy. Don't do that. Because flu, cause in my flu, back. flu got flu got like different strains, right? And then they they have oh, a man. shot yeah. for just a certain strain, right? They don't have it for yeah. each and every strain. So yeah, with COVID, is is that going to be similar? Like, there's so many different strains that they're going to have just one generic one, or who knows? Uh, don't you know. Know, I don't know, man. Like it's it's Tough. crazy to think of that because all of the news, all of the information that we're getting from the news has all been generically uh, presented rhetoric that the I hate. I mean, I, I'm not a political person, but like that the left is eating up and just regurgitating all over social media, and the right is disputing and, and then making it about you know Donald Trump is the reason why we have you know coronavirus and covid and all of that and mm. but but i mean the, the facts are like if you really look at if you look at look at the cdc and i don't know about the world health organization but the cdc has been dropping stats for the past couple months yeah. on the actual number of deaths and and positive rates and people and it's still 99.96 percent right. survival su- rate. Wow. survival rate yeah so you know, Biden, first thing Biden says is he's going to, you know, put in So if when he becomes the actual president, you know, he's going to uh, announce the mask mandates and another, another lockdown yeah. Mm. Mm. Yep. For, that, for that point four, Ooh. that point zero four percent of the people that's not surviving. Yeah, we got we got to lock it and down. There's, there's been a, there's been mm. an uptick lately, though, right? With because I know out here in New York, we were down. uh Thing, like 500 cases and then now it's back up to like 3k right, right. now but but the way that they determine those numbers is based on how many uh kits they process it has nothing to do with like the actual cases it's just the number of tests that they process oh really? let me tell you this let me tell you this i went i work in one of my job i work in healthcare so one of my clients had to go to the hospital two weeks ago his blood oxygen levels were really low 
So we took him to the, he's 66 years old. We took him to the hospital and I can't really say too much because of HIPAA laws, but sure. right. what, I, what I can say is when we got to the hospital, as soon as the EMS showed up, the first thing they said was COVID, 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 COVID. It's like they were wow. re- practicing programmed. what they rehearsed. Yeah. They were programmed, mm-hmm. exactly. And we were like, wait, what? So I get tested every two weeks and everyone in my, I have six clients. Five of them have come up positive, have shown zero symptoms, symptoms. I mean, come up positive multiple times and right. shown zero symptoms. And every staff member has tested negative. Mm, but there's yeah. also that thing that, you know, health organizations, healthcare organizations get incentivized when they have well, positive yeah. patients. Now, right. I don't know if that's the case with where I work, but, you know, and if they see this, then, hey, so what? <laughs> but, <laughs> but so when I got to, when we got to the hospital, man, by the time we, before we got to the hospital, the EMS had said co- the word COVID like 30 times. He's probably got COVID. That means everybody here has COVID, 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 COVID. I'm like, well, no, we just got tested, boss. We, nope, we're negative. Right. So we get there. And so here's what happened. <laughs> I'm sitting in the room with him. The young nurse walks in. Uh, well, you know, no, she started questioning me about my, about my mask. Cause I had, so I have seasonal allergies and I had taken a nasal spray because if I go into, I live in Florida, it's really hot. And when you yeah. walk into a building, it's really cold. So when that happens to me, I get stuffy like real quick because I have really sensitive sinus passages. Yeah. So I had to take a nasal spray. And then for about a couple of minutes, I can't breathe that well. So I'm not going to shove a mask on my face on my, over my nose and I can't breathe. She didn't know that, but she came in. So I had it like, you know, not covering my nose, which I typically don't anyway. And she starts, you know, you sure you, you know, you got safe and blah, blah, blah. You sh-. I'm like, yeah, we're good. We get tested every two weeks. So she's like, you know, you, you want to pull your mask over your nose? I said, no, I'm good. You know, I didn't explain to her why, but I said, no, I'm good. She said, well, you know, aren't you afraid of catching COVID? I said, no, I'm not. Right. She got offended <laughs> because I'm not afraid of catching. She, right. it, like it was like it insulted her very being. So then the conversation continues and she goes, well, people are dying from COVID out there and blah, blah. I said, people die from the flu. More people die from the flu every year. I'm not right. afraid of catching the flu. She really didn't like that. She said, well, a nurse here in this hospital died from COVID. I said, well, I'm sorry to hear that, but that doesn't make me afraid of COVID. Right. So People and she storms out <laughs> yeah, every day. B. So <laughs> she storms out. Another nurse peeks his head in. Male nurse this time. Young dude. He's like, hey, man, just so you know, he's probably going to have t- tested positive for COVID. That means you probably have COVID. I said, no, we don't. I looked him right in the face and said, no, we don't. He doesn't have COVID. Neither do I. So uh, uh, he didn't know what to say because he, he thought I was going to just jump in line with him and go, oh, my God, I have COVID. Right. So I was like, no, nah, we maybe, don't maybe he was afraid you were going to body slam on my choke slam on my son. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to. But no, I looked at him. I said, no, we're good. We don't have COVID. He goes, well, you're a big, strong guy, I guess. I'm like, yeah, like that would have that could stop me from catching a virus. Right. <laughs> so then the, the first nurse comes back in. So she ends up elaborating and says that every hospital tests everyone positive. They consider everyone positive for COVID. The moment you walk in the door, you're considered positive for COVID. Even wow. if you test negative, they're calling you positive. And I looked, I wish I'd have recorded it with my wow. phone. Like I wish I'd have been slick and turned my camera on and recorded this. Cause this is a real life conversation. And so I was like, that's weird. And she got offended again. She, and this is a young nurse. She's like, well, there's a pandemic. I said, but you're saying that people are positive that aren't that's affecting people's livelihoods. Right. Like, right. If you send my job a test, result that says I tested positive, I, I couldn't go to work for the next two weeks. Right. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? So the conversation ended up ending, but so yeah, I mean, there's all of these false positives. So when I hear about all these numbers of, you know, the of, a rise in positives and blah, 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 number one, they're testing people more. Right. And for, for me, from what I've seen firsthand for the past five months where I work with these clients testing positive, it, they've shown zero symptoms. So like, when did being sick stop looking like what it looks like when you're sick? Like, when did that happen <laughs> right. in human biology? Right. You know what I mean? So to me, it's all brainwashing, like the social distancing thing and all of that and the masks and everyone has ever caught COVID was one mask. <laughs> right. Right. So, you know what's cool. interesting is that you say you're from Florida and my wife. I live in Florida. You live in Florida, yeah. and my wife was saying um, that she has friends out there, and I guess mm. this was when there was like ten thousand cases a day or oh, something like that. Yeah. And she was like, and she was like, all her friends are saying, we don't see the cases, we don't, we don't know anybody who got positive cases. 
And yep. she's like, because, well, you know, she calls and she's like, yeah, I heard it's crazy out there. And they're like, mm -hmm. uh, not that we notice. <laughs> you hear about all the empty hospitals in the in the summer, like in um, like April, May, when it was at the height of it, when no. they were. Oh, yeah. So all of these, all of the news and, you know, perpetuating this nonsense that all of the hospitals are overrun and staff people are overrun. And then all of the essential worker rhetoric and all of the you know hospital doctor worker worship like they did with 9-11 with police and firefighters and, and all of that like it's, it's all it's it's social yeah it's, it's social engineering yeah wow. so it's interesting oh yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so th there's there's points and agendas behind it but there's like you can look up you can just google it like empty hospital videos like amateur vi people amateurs going in with cell phones recording em empty hospitals like just dead hospitals while the on the news mm. they're telling you that all the hospitals are overrun and i, I found a video and i downloaded it i gotta find it in my phone of a news uh some i can't i can't even remember what station it was or whatever what what uh media outlet it was but it was on tv showing split screens of hospitals being overrun you know being you know crazy overstaffed right, right. and it was in two different cities i don't even think they were in the same country it was the exact same video yeah was, i remember that they used, i did see that i did see they that. used the italy one yeah that yeah, that's what it was italy yep yep, yep. they, they reused the same video Yo, that ain't no different. Remember when um, remember when CNN used on um, World War Z footage when they oh, was yeah, uh, they did. They did. <laughs> and the crazy, wow. and I'm working TV. The crazy thing is, is that people will, as long as it's on TV, they the mass majority of people will buy it. They'll eat it up, man. As right. long as it's on what? television. So, and, so you're and saying you, and you can't tell them? Go ahead. So, so you saying WWE TV is more truthful than <laughs> CNN TV? It's facts, bro. No. Stop. Ah, facts. Ah. It's facts, bro. Don't let them go that far. Don't well. bring them over. Don't don't well. be bursting, don't be bursting bubbles over here, man. Oh, oh. Them bubble, that bubble been busted and sailed and flown off a long time ago. <laughs> so, for, all, for all the listeners out there, if you don't know, Monster Tava is also is it an X or is still? Uh, no, I'm not with WWE anymore. Okay. Ex yeah. uh WWE member. So he yeah. used to wrestle back in the days and he's still wrestling. I I, I seen a post recently where you were like, Yeah, uh, I'm ready to get back in it. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I actually just wrestled in uh Dallas this past weekend for the first time in a year. Oh, uh, they go your weekend right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was That's my dope. weekend. Yeah. 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 It was, Did you it win was or what? Yeah, I won. Um, <laughs> I mean I, the wrestling don't matter, but yeah, I won. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, I, I won. <laughs> yeah, but let me that. ask you: you, so you said you, you back home in Florida, right? I'm back in Florida now. Yeah. How's the storm? Man, I didn't even know there was a storm coming. I was at work, and I I left to go to the gym to go train, and I'm like, "What is going? Like, I'm the <laughs> wind is whipping my truck. I'm like, whoa! Like, I'm slipping and sliding, like." And I texted a friend of mine, I'm like, yo, we, we got a storm coming or something? He's like, yeah, I guess a little baby hurricane. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't watch the news. This here's the thing. I I actively avoid watching the news. I refuse mm. to watch the news. I, I won't do it because the news is so sl slanted. It depends on what station you're watching. They're either slanted to the left or they're yeah. slanted to the right. And, and I hate to say that, I don't know how this is going to sound, but the organizations that slant to the left feed a little bit more propaganda i hate mm. to say that it's, it's a lot more fear based for sure yeah oh the fear mongering is nuts Dude, man nuts let me tell you man i i and i i'm kind of glad that everything is kind of over with the elections because i was telling i was telling these dudes like maybe cnn yeah. to start reporting on anything other than trump and with COVID, which they're not gonna stop, but no, they they're really about to push the COVID agenda now. They really push. Yeah, they're gonna OD on it. They they just took Bruh. the seven hours of Trump out, and it's gonna be twenty four seven. Yo, I, you know, you know, so the the White House had a press conference today, and, and yeah, I couldn't find it on CNN. I couldn't find it on any of the channels. It was like, on YouTube, right? Wow, it was I saw exclusively I, yeah, I saw on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, yeah, it was exclusively on YouTube. I couldn't find yeah. it on any of the news channels, man. Oh, well, not even all Fox. The, all they were playing was all they were playing. I don't have Fox on my TV. Oh, all, they, all they were playing was I was on on Pluto. I was on Pluto. Okay, okay. They don't gotcha, have, gotcha. Um, yeah, yeah. All they were playing was COVID, the the vaccine, how it's ninety percent of effective and and it's even more effective than the than the cold the, than the flu vaccine because the flu vaccine is only forty to sixty percent. And I'm like, what? Hmm. You know what? Though? Here's what, yeah. See what they do is they'll 
so I saw something on ESPN. This one, it, it pissed me off. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, I guess o, uh, Odell Beckham had tweeted something about, you know, right. COVID's not gonna get me not coming in this body, blah, 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 whatever. You know, it could be satire. You know, he could have been being sarcastic right. or he's just, you know, whatever. It doesn't even matter, right? Right. But the ESPN, this was like two weeks ago or so, the ESPN analysts uh, took a break from whatever they were talking about to criticize him for p- posting that, right. tweeting that. I'm like, you talking about games and you're going to stop to talk about his tweet that had nothing right. to do with the game. It's not right. even on his team. It's so like, yeah, he said that the tweets and the, the COVID is not going to get him, blah, blah. Well, the COVID is, it's killed millions of people and it got the rock and the rock is a specimen and it got this person naming all celebrities, Mike. Right, right. It got this celebrity and that celebrity. So I'm thinking to myself, first of all, you're talking about the deaths, which are easily proven to be misguided numbers. But you're not talking about the survival rate, which is an right. easily proven number, a right. 99.96% survival rate. Secondly, you're only naming celebrities pushing these programs in the matrix to think, well, if the celebrity has it, then that means I can get it. Right. And it almost makes these programs mm-hmm. want to get, when I say programs, I mean people, sure. want to get, they, it's like they almost want to get it so they can be like the celebrities. Right. When you think about that, why is it, okay, first of all, has anybody anybody here caught the flu before, uh, or yeah. bronchitis, or anything bronchitis, like that? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. Did you go on Twitter and announce it to the world that you caught bronchitis? <laughs> <laughs> no. Thinking about social media. Right. Every celebrity that caught COVID went online and told the world they caught COVID. That's true, especially in the beginning. Every it seemed Yo, like it was an everybody agenda. caught it. Oh, I caught Bro. COVID, and there was a whole sob story. And it's like, what are you? What are y'all talking about? All right. Yeah. right. Listen, there was a right. point on you in the YouTube world that trending mm. videos from these big YouTubers were, I caught it. This is my experience. Yeah. Yep. It yeah. seems like they were getting paid. <laughs> they were getting paid. Oh, inside sure. school. Come on, man. I mean, I don't, I can't, I can't say yeah. that I know for sure. And, it just and not like everybody. It. Yeah. I mean, not everybody. And I know some people who. Who caught it? Like Dayton. Dayton caught it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And he and he and he shared his testimony on it. For me, to me, that's different. Right. That's different because him and I talked about it. That's that's different. Like he's he's coming from a perspective of I, you know I got sick, we I beat it. Not I have it. You can have it too. You know what right. I'm saying? Like like and, and I appreciated where he was coming from. You know, and, and the brothers like that, but the ancestors like that. But like when uh, the rock and all of that, I'm like. Yeah, you post the videos. You working out nonstop. Yeah, yeah. but um, and and buy my vodka or whatever he's selling. <laughs> bro, and you and it takes COVID away. It's COVID <laughs> too, right? Yeah, you drink that tequila. So, COVID goes. So away. speaking right. about that's how it is tequila. <laughs> speaking about propaganda, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We yeah. recently got an, an announcement that Biden is set to be president of the United States, and I say uh. set because. Um, it was the news. It was the news. It was on the news that the news announced it. I was just watching Ben Shapiro actually, and he was saying, "Ben Shapiro, yeah, who gives who gives the media the right to say that someone is the right. media? Uh, the is the president is the president with just yeah. projections and yeah. um, so yeah. you know we're here. There's a lot of back and forth about fraud, voter fraud, right? There's videos. Mm-hmm. There's some mm-hmm. evidence of that." Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. No, there is no. We don't know if there's evidence on it. What is video? There's video. Yeah, there's video. There's video. We don't know. I have, if it's I have so a video. Important. I tell you what, I have a video that I that I when I come across stuff like this, I download it and, and yeah, because it's going to disappear. It's going to disappear. Yeah. So I have a video of a guy under oath in court saying and admitting to a judge to a jury that there is voter fraud. And this is not has nothing to do with the the. Uh, election. This is an older video from, let's say, within the past five years, to be fair. And the guy is admitting that elections can be and are manipulated. The the votes and vote counts oh, are actually. I, I mean, I have that video in my phone. Like it's so crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. and then I was, you know, I was watching a couple of videos on supposedly Trump won Pennsylvania by like seven thousand vote or hundred votes. I don't know. And then after three days of private vote counting. Then Biden came out with 9,000 votes ahead of Trump, you know, so, and again, I'm not I, I, a proponent of either, but, okay. but I can like, for me, my stance on Trump, 
and this is probably going to branch off into, you know, another aspect of this whole situation. When Trump first got elected, I felt some kind of way. I did. But that was also because that was when the police brutality thing was becoming in vogue, if you, you know, if you will, 2016. So I felt some kind of way. I still wasn't brainwashed to be a Obama lover just because we look the same, look similar. I just, but I, I wasn't, I didn't know enough about a politics to spit out an objective opinion either in all fairness. Right. And I'm not saying that I know so much now, but I have, I've learned to pay a lot more attention to things. Mm. So yo, that's yeah. good stuff because a lot of people, they mm. just, they research one day and it's, Oh, I know this. And they don't oh, know the don't full even, story. They don't even <laughs> research. They just go on social media <laughs> and see memes. Leaders. Right. Yeah. They see memes of Donald Trump drinking bleach and think what <laughs> he, he told us to drink bleach. <laughs> when you watch the interview, he asked the guy, is there, right. Is there a possibility to make these kind of chemicals somehow a way you can put in human bodies? Like, is it safe? Can you find a scientific way to make it safe for human bodies? And the guy said, I don't know. We can figure it out. The media spun that and made it say that Trump mm-hmm. said drink bleach and drink, yeah. you know, Clorox. I'm like, that's, but that's, and I'm not even a Trump guy, but like, I right. see how, when I saw how almost everything he said was cre- cleverly twisted and manipulated, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. everyone in the world that subscribes to the ideo- ideology of far left liberalism right. just jumped on it and just just <laughs> ate it up and then regurgitated it on social media. Then it got regurgitated over and over and over to the point where I had to get off Instagram yesterday. Like I didn't want to be on Instagram because every other post <laughs> was a picture of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And people, oh my God, the first woman black president, and blah blah blah, and this and that, and I'm like, but they're not even, they haven't been elected yet. You're right. This, mm-hmm. it's not, and to, for me, it makes me not trust the government even more because if if they're willing to basically lie to the public and put knowing knowing how divisive and manipulative manipulative that is, because let's say somehow Trump was able to win the presidency. And have success in the courts with improved as fraud, right? Right. This country is going to implode, and they know that. Yeah. Yeah. So what? So what that says to me is the left, and I'm not saying the entire left or the entire democratic or liberal side. I'm saying the people, the puppet masters, if you will, right? Or the powers that be are are easily willing to use their own followers as collateral damage to further their own agenda. Oh. Knowing we're going to just put our faces all over the news and say we're the president. We're the... So, so, like, that'd be the same if in the past Super Bowl with the Redskins, well, no, the 49ers and the Chiefs, when the 49ers looked like they were about to win, then all of a sudden, all of the social media, 49ers Super Bowl yeah. champs, 49ers Super yeah, Bowl yeah, champs, yeah. but they didn't win yet. Right. So, everybody who didn't watch thinks the 49ers were actually the Super Bowl champs. With time left. <laughs> with yeah. time, le- with right. time left. Right. You right. see what I'm saying? And, you know, again, I'm not. My stance, I, I didn't vote, and people have their opinions on it, and and mm-hmm. I didn't yeah, vote. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, vote. I don't participate in politics, yeah. and I'm not afraid to say that. And here's why: if the government, if this government, is willing to put its own society at risk to push a politi- push a very dangerous political agenda by painting Biden and Harris's faces all over the place, even though they're not actually president and vice president yet. And not honoring the fact that the election is not over yet, knowing it's going to rip this country in half For if sure. somehow they don't end up becoming president because they've oh, yeah. conditioned yeah. the left or people who follow the left or extremists, not not everyone on the left. So let me be fair. They've conditioned them to think to be so entitled and so misguided in their ideas and beliefs that if it doesn't happen the way they want it to happen, then they can then they're free to destroy wherever they live and just tear down the businesses of the people who they patronize on a daily basis. But now I can tear it down because I didn't get what I wanted politically. Right. And right. it just, it's, it breaks my heart and it makes me sick too. But at the same time, I also, I don't like the arguments from the right. When people say, like I've had white people come up to me and say, man, Martin Luther King would turn over in his grave. People are for the, <laughs> they're forgetting uh-huh. the, what Martin Luther King said about my person of the country. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right. I'm like, don't, first of all, don't quote Martin Luther King to me for a few reasons. Don't quote Martin Luther King to me. Secondly, secondly, I understand why those people are angry. Even when it's misguided, I get it. I understand. So 
as a black person, not as a minority, not as a person of color, as a black person in America is different. Now, am I saying that just because it's different, that it's more important of a struggle or more valid of a struggle? Absolutely not. And that's that's where we where we lose the sense of reality and what makes sense, where the left and the right are divided, where, you know, black conservatives and black liberals can't seem to understand that, first of all, we're all puppets on a string until we cut that string and realize that the higher power that created us is over those puppets. Right. Mm, but right. people don't want to do that. Mm. So, but yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm I told nah, you. We're good. Right, we're we're gonna hear that, that. What we want, man. <laughs> we, we, like, we, like, we like that perspective, man. I, I, th- I think yeah. I think that the people on the left are, are, are disingenuous because four years ago they were talking about fr- uh, voter fraud and Russia was colluding and doing this and that they're manipulating the yeah. election. And then yeah. four years later, they're saying that there's no fraud. There's no possibility. Trump is a loser because he's accused right. of the same thing. But the fact yeah. that they're acting like there's no possibility of fraud when four years ago they said that there was fraud, you know what I'm saying? And, there, and this mm-hmm. government, this our country has a history of interfering with um, elections in other countries. You know what <laughs> right. I'm saying? Like, how could right. you tell me that it's not possible? You know, mm-hmm. like four years ago, you were saying it was possible. But now that mm-hmm. your guy supposedly won. It's mm-hmm. not possible anymore. When you, <laughs> nothing has been changed to the process, like literally no. nothing has been changed to the process other than the mail-in ballots. That's it. Oh, the mail-in ballots, man. You know what's <laughs> you know what's crazy? Like, yeah, it, it can get tiring, right? You know what I'm saying? Like when you see, Bro. like what you're saying, and you yeah. see people, and they run off of these headlines or whatever mm-hmm. the media says, mm-hmm. and then you trying to state your case, mm. and th- there's no getting through. Like, that's bruh, bruh. I'm glad you said that because, <laughs> okay, the idea, now here's, and, and crazy, crazy enough, when you're talking to someone who doesn't want to be unplugged from the Matrix, or what it, what it, what it, uh, what do you say? What did you say in the movie? Like, they'll fight to stay plugged in the Matrix. They don't want <laughs> you to take away their comfort zone. I got yeah. friends, and I'm like, yo, I hear them talk. First of all, I can be objective. I have, I'm, I am able to hold more than one idea or mm-hmm. ideal, right? I'm able to accept more than one and not just be focused on my own. I'm able to understand that there are differences in people's lives and the way that they see things mm-hmm. and, and like atheists and, and, and Muslims. And my, my, my best friend grew up is, is Muslim, converted to Islam. And we, we, even better friends than we always have been. And we completely disagree on, on theology, sure. but we're, our friend, we've been friends over 20 years and we're even closer than we've ever been because I see, pa- I, I I don't support Islam, but I support him. And to be honest with you, I'll tell him like, you be the best Muslim you can be. Be the best Muslim that you can be. Every when it's time to pray, I'm like, yeah, did you pray? You know what I'm saying? Like that right. times, you know, I'm going to get on my knees and pray next to him. Of course, we're not praying to the same God. Right. right but right. my point is, and, you know, we've had conversations, you know, and and I've told him, I said, hey, look, if you look up in the sky and you see Jesus then you better be willing to say, you know what? My bad. I was wrong. Right. 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 <laughs> Quickly. But Quickly. Just, that's all I say. That's all I say. <laughs> you look up in the sky and it's Jesus and not Allah, then you just you just at least be able to say, you My know bad. what? I got it wrong. My bad. Oops. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, and vice versa. You know, if if for the sake of all fairness, I look up in the sky and it's Allah, then I'm like, all right, you know what? I guess I was wrong then. Right. right. You know, but in all seriousness, the point that I was going to make was, People are so quick to say Trump is racist. Biden's, you know, for for the people, whatever. Trump is racist. I'm like, all right, I don't. And I've had, I was having a good conversation with my friend Strong Life Raw, and him and I were talking. He, he shoots, you know, my videos, and we were having, we have very good, objective conversations about, you know, left versus right and politics and everything. And I don't feel like I've ever heard Trump say anything in public overtly racist. Right. I I do feel like I've heard Biden say directly racist things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But I will say Trump Trump's stance on police brutality and and people protesting and you know and, and the athletes protesting came off very disingenuous, very very arrogant yeah. and condescending. And so yep. that 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 bothered me. That bothered me because then right. you got the far right people, you know, who follow him who have that America, 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 you know, racism is over. Get over it. Blah, blah, blah. There's no such thing as racism or systemic racism. You know, racism's over. That's not none of that is true. You know, but then of course, then you got the argument on the left is 
my my skin is my racism, racism, racism. I'm the biggest victim. Victim Olympics. I'm the big. No, I'm the biggest victim. <laughs> victim Olympics. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but so, for example, if you so Biden was interviewing with the, with the Breakfast Club, and he said, "You don't know who you want to vote for. Yeah. You ain't black." <laughs> And then laughed. Then laughed. (laughs) Let me tell you something. When I was at WWE, I can't tell you how many times I saw older white men, same age, say race racist jokes, Mm. straight up racist jokes. Mm. Like literally drop in bombs with the ER on it, and then look at you and laugh the exact same way. Wow. Wrestling business is one of the most racist forms of entertainment. Ever. There's beautiful parts of the rest of Western business, but I've experienced some straight racism. And when I saw that, it took me back to WWE. It took me back wow. to legends that I won't name right. who said some, who talked crazy to my face or to other people and laughed with you. You're not smart enough to know that I just insulted you and you can't do anything about it. Yeah, it's so crazy. That, it's crazy that you say that because. Mm-hmm. Um, like the fellas know my, my grandfather wrestled mm-hmm. in WWE. Really? Yeah. He, he was one of what they call them jobbers, right? Uh, well, like, those were the best. Those are the most talented dudes though. Yeah. So he, yeah. like his claim to fame was in the Piper's pit. Right? Oh, word. Word. Yeah. Uh, his name was Frank Williams. Okay. Right? Word. I'm, I'm going to look him up. Word. Yeah. So he was in there. Right. And it's funny you say that because I felt when watching the videos, even like Roddy, when he was like, mm. yeah, I, I, got, never, I got that too. I got that. Right. You got too. when he yeah. was like a Puerto Rican from mm. what well, he said, Ohio yeah. with freckles. Like it mm. was the way he said it. Like it came mm. off. You mm. know what I'm saying? I'm like, uh, mm. <laughs> but then you also, you also have, uh, you know, the whole situation with Hulk Hogan too. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And you know what? Like as far as those things, people were, again, people were so quick to jump on the, that's racist train, right? right. The istophobes, right? And I know, I know how I sound. Or, you know, I know what I sound like, but I I had to learn that racism is going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's not going away. As long as humanity is imperfect, there's no such thing as equality. That's a lie. That's a buzzword to push a certain agenda for a certain or a couple groups. No such thing as equality. That's a lie. Racism is always going to be around. Why? Because people are imperfect. Racism doesn't just come from white people. There are racism among, there's racism in every community, every community, right? And so when I look at certain things, I just, I see things with different eyes. I saw with the whole feminist movement in 2018 and 19, where everybody was coming for straight white males, straight white males are the enemy. They're the devils, the patriarchy, patriarchy. Okay. So any straight white man that said, Hey, I, you know, I have no problem with women doing their thing. I just don't subscribe to the notion of feminism, but you know, Hey, much respect. You're a sexist, blah, blah, blah. So then straight white men are being attacked. And I looked at it and I thought, then I started seeing sayings and memes, straight black men are the new straight white men. And I thought to myself, well, guess what they're coming for next? Yeah. (laughs) Because I saw, I saw, a commercial, a campaign commercial for Joe Biden, a barbershop, black barbershop. We know the stereotypical, typical right. black barbershop, right? Why was this barbershop a bunch of obviously gay dudes, which cool, right? Talking about Biden. Right. But they had them looking like thugs, looking like, you know, big typical, you know, burly, you know, black men with the beers and the dreads right. and all of that. But they was you know, talking real, real cinnamon, if you know what I'm saying. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, I'm, and, 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 and I'm, but I'm being for real, you know, and cool, nothing to get, you know, whatever. I, I shouldn't even have to qualify that, but, right, yeah, yeah. you know, it is what it is. No, but that, 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 that brings up an interesting point because wasn't it Chappelle mm-hmm. who said that they always try to put black men in a dress? They always try to, yep, yep, yep. You know what I mean, the feminization and the, and the demasculization, it, it, what that does is it's telling the young kids, because I work with kids, it's telling the young kids. It's not cool to be a man, to be masculine, right. toxic masculinity. Right. It's not cool to be ma- to be a man. So they're they're literally. It's almost it, they're using words. It's wordplay, literal wordplay. And as a as an MC, as a lyricist, I see what they're doing. The right. wordplay alone is enough to brainwash somebody. And then if you see it enough and it's repeated to you enough, like for example, 
you ever been driving in a storm and you put your windshield wipers on and all of us, you know, we know music. So we have a rhythmical brain, right? Windshield wipers would be going. And before you know it, the windshield wipers are in a rhythm. Yeah. Right. Our brain organizes things, even, you know, lower functioning or brains, you know, with, with, with people who have, you know, dis- dysfunctions and things like their chemical disorders, we still organize things in our own way. So yeah. that part of, I guess, our psychological functioning brain, so easy to be manipulated that if you put something in a commercial over and over, over and over, over and over, it's, or social media over and over and over and over, the more you see it, if you if you don't have enough maturity to understand that there's something behind it or that just because I'm seeing it a lot doesn't mean that it's the gospel, you're, you're going to jump on that bandwagon and think, oh, right. this is true. This is true. This is true. Mm. And seeing it's that, like it music, tells me, right? You know, like <laughs> exactly like music, exactly. The songs that you don't that, like, and you be like, the first time you hear, ah, I don't like this song. Then a couple of weeks later, you this is my it. jam. You know all of the words. You know, <laughs> no, 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 no. Better example. You know all of the words. Yeah. You, you, the song come on, you don't like it, and you like, and, but you rapping it word for word, like, yeah. why do I know this song? Because you've heard it so much. Right. Yeah. Because you know the I'm other saying? day, Switch was rapping WAP. <laughs> Bro, I, I guarantee. Oh, listen, it? I don't worship no, praise. <laughs> that's a worship and worship and praise. It's so funny though. I guarantee we could between the four of us and five of us, we could probably rap that whole song in the parts that the other parts other person doesn't know. Okay. Why? Because it's been forced down our throats and into our psyche for the past how many months? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And the song is horrible. It, it's, it's terrible. Nothing against you know the ladies who made it. The song yeah, is terrible. Sucks. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's true. a terrible song, but <laughs> and it's not, it's crazy. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the Biden Harris speech, the acceptance speech, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but Har- uh, yeah. uh, Harris actually had a line, uh, that stood out to me too. That's yeah, to immediately, too. I already know what you're gonna say, and it said, and to the children of our country, regardless of your gender, our oh, country yeah. has sent you a clear message, yeah. Dream with ambition, lead with conviction, and see yourselves in the way that others may not, simply mm-hmm. because they've never seen it before, but know that we will applaud you every step of the way. Yo, that's the only really? part of the and speech cool I remember. Oh, that's the ready. only part that I remember, too. Because that's the mm-hmm. part that's going to stick out. Like, y'all already. I was like, wait, what? They already mm-hmm. putting the drops in. Yo, and your man said he that's what he's going to do in the first 100 days, too. What is yep. he going to do in 100 days? He said he said that the, the number one priority for them is the LGBT community. Interesting. There's going to be so much fascist laws. We're not allowed. We're if you don't can if, if you don't ride that wave, you're going to be cons- or you just you're the, just you're not the on minority. that side, bruh. And, and, and they are the minority by a long shot. Like right. that's a very small part of the, the community of the population. But you're not going to be able to allow like to less than five percent or something. Right. We're not going to be allowed to have an opinion. We're not going to be allowed to disagree. Not so much to disagree. They're going to deplatform people, which I've seen already. It's mm-hmm. happening gonna, already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just for having your own opinion. People going to be losing yep. their jobs. You, yo, losing you're not jobs. Be, yeah. Just and, and anything and everything is going to be called hate speech. Guess where they coming? Guess what? Guess what they coming for? That's what the end game is. They coming for us. They coming for that Bible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. They coming for yeah. us right here. Yeah. Okay. Right yeah, here. The word. Yes, sir. The mm-hmm. church. They coming for that church. You know, and I'm gonna tell you, that's not Christian. <laughs> <laughs> that's so dope, man. That's so dope. That's so dope. That's so. That's not Christian. That's now, so dope. Now speaking yeah. about the Bible, right? Yeah. Um, So now with these these um, with this allege that Biden is supposed to win, we've mm. had a lot of prophets say that Trump is gonna win, and Trump uh, will win. Oh, and the Lord what, told yeah. them. Wait, wait, wait. Your, your, your segue game is yeah. on point. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so listen, I've been like professionally media trained. Like, I'm no lie, like acting classes, all of that. Your segue game is on point. <laughs> boy, that was a Steph Curry shot right there, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, I've heard a little bit of that. I, I saw a couple like KB, somebody had posted on it and they had, you know, some funny um, perspective on it. <sighs> How about I mean, your man Kenneth Copeland though? Yo, he, uh, was he was laughing. laughing. You saw that? Yo, oh, no, did I didn't see that. that? that I didn't, I didn't see it? that. Oh, we gotta send you that. We'll send you that video, man. Oh, he he oh, just oh, went oh, into oh, it like he was laughing like, hysteria. He they said like, Biden won. Ha ha ha! Nah, hey, you know but, he got that creepy look and that laugh. You know how when he was talking about COVID yeah, last time, he did it for like two ha, minutes though. Ha, oh, that's a dude. The COVID nineteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Be gone. 
He gone. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> he, yo, that, was, that was scary, yeah. And that's crazy because he said that and he still got people that are watching and listening to this dude. Like, dude, yeah. can y'all see, not hear it, what it he works, said at that time? Mm-hmm. Huh? I saw a, a, somebody had posted something in the story and I repost. I think it was Bizzle. And it said, um, if I if I'm not if I don't vote Republican, I'm not Christian enough. If I don't po- re- vote Democrat, I'm not um, black enough or something. Like, I think that's what it said. And he said, miss me with that. You know, it, it was kind of the, the idea yeah, of it was yeah. you know, miss me with that rhetoric. Like, you, yeah, know, don't, yeah. you don't get to tell me. So like what you're saying with Kendall Copeland, like that is crazy as that sounds. The people are still going to follow that. You know, right. then it, and that's that's a church. And it almost has you have to ask, what are they following him or the right. word? Right. right. You know, and I'm not criticizing Kendall Copeland, but I mean, you still got to ask that question. And we are. Areas. Yeah, you should. Right, right. You should right. Question, That's man. not Christian. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hey. Listen, <laughs> and listen, I'm I'm not and I'm not going to say that the prophets that are saying this because we don't know. Right. We're still we not. Don't we don't know. It might be. They might, they might the be right. Still got time. They still you know got what I mean? We don't know until really inauguration day when we like, all right, come January. But we'll it's know. just like. Like, I don't know, man. It's just like you said, there's something that's off, man. There's something that's not there. And it's scary mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. at least, because mm-hmm. it's like, yo, these people have churches. These people have congregations. And I get it. You know, they might have a yeah. passion for the Lord. But it's like, at what point do we say, homie, you need to stop. You need to sit down because you've been spitting this for a long time. Because they, they don't have somebody true. to hold them accountable. They got yes, man. Yeah, I mean, it's a possibility. You know, I'm not saying that that's the case, but you never know. Yeah. You know, but it also means it also seems like a lot of the church um, sort of has an idolatry problem when it comes to Trump. Oh, you know, oh, yeah. you can argue, you know, that he can be more uh, Christian, quote unquote, than you know, past yeah. presidents or whatever, or maybe have more religious freedom. But like right. the way that it seems that they worship the man is 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 scary yeah that, that that's nuts yeah like i had a friend of mine ask me who's she is very very much on the left and she asked me how could you how did she how did she put it how could you not compromise i know where uh, you're going i know where you're the, going. yeah your your christianity with donald trump i can't remember the exact word she used like his character pretty much right how could well, you just, follow you, someone with a character like that who doesn't represent Jesus, how yeah, Jesus, but, but a, yeah, but associate your Christianity with him, basically. You know, I, I can't mm. think of the words she used. And I looked at her, I said, I don't. Mm. She said, What do you mean? I said, He has nothing to do with my relationship with Jesus, he has nothing right. to do with that. Mm-hmm. Like, no matter what he does, my relationship with God is going to be what it is, regardless of what he does and says. You know what I'm saying? And right. it's, you know, she said, Oh, I said, but again, people don't have the ability to understand and accept other people's ideas and ideologies and if we could do that we could be able to disagree without it being called hate right mm-hmm. right like or yeah, hate like, speech like my marriage with my wife and switch mm-hmm. marriage how he handles his marriage you know what i'm saying it could be totally different <laughs> it, it but it don't be. change my view on marriage right man bro that's good Bars. <laughs> Bars. <Shut up>. <laughs> <laughs> Bars. Yo, and you know, you know, it's another thing. It's almost um I hear a lot, oh, uh, you know, the left is what's gonna bring the persecution on the church, right? And and you and you just kind of mentioned it as well. But it's also like, oh, are, are we afraid of that? Or are we like, are we not ready for that? You know what I'm saying? Is it like, are we trying to stop the persecution? Or right. do we or do we finally accept it like yo, you know what? This world don't don't love Jesus, you know what I mean? Like they it, it's gonna come. He said it, it might too. come. It's, it's gonna come and it might and, and it's, it's gonna come. If so are we just trying Bible. to delay it or are we just mm-hmm. or are we are we saying yo, we're not prepared for when it comes? Mm-hmm. Here's what we're doing. We're taking the steering wheel when we don't our hands don't belong on it. Number one, mm. that Bible tells us what's going to happen. And I stopped. Like in 2016, with the shootings and all that, and the, and the Black Lives Matter and all of that start blowing up, and I got in my feelings about it. But then I started thinking, and then I had a like an, another spiritual awakening. I had a few actually, but I had a spiritual awakening in 2016, and it kind of made me rethink how I felt about police brutality and, and my anger towards it and all of that. Right. Right. But the more I started studying the Bible, like for real, for real, studying the Bible, 
it said to me that what's happening, we were already told it's going to happen. Mm. So if we trust God, the believers, if we trust God, then we should trust that what's happening is going to happen. And what's, you know, the, the word has already been foretold. Right. It's our job to play our part and have faith that we're going to be okay. Even if it doesn't mean our, our earth suits right, right, aren't going right. to be okay because right. This is temporary. You know, this is temporary. This isn't who we are. It's what we are. Who we are is our mind, but, you know, is our spirit and our soul. So that lives forever. So I'm not so much worried anymore about what's going to happen as well with, you know, with, with Trump and the prophecies and, and all of that, because, or, or you know, or, or the left attacking the church, because they're going to attack the church. There's going to be a great falling away from the church. And it's going to be like the days of Noah. You know, we know what it says, you know, mm-hmm. and look mm-hmm. at it. It's already happening. The rhetoric is the propaganda is being implanted into the minds of the youth into thinking that to be Christian is bad because it goes against the freedoms of love being love. And it promotes hate that, and all that. That it promotes yeah. hate. Yeah. And the whole statement of love is love is so divisive. Like what people don't realize, and I'm not against the idea of that at all but what people don't realize bro like being a lyricist is like you you when you understand how to put words together to send certain messages you understand when you see that being done and even the saying black lives matter it's such a divisive statement that on the surface if you if you, your wavelength isn't high enough you don't see that 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 statement alone is is how do i put it it's not meant to uplift anything. It's true. It's it's a true statement. Black lives yeah. do matter, right? It's true. But that's mm-hmm. the ceiling is low on that. Now, above that ceiling is the divisiveness and the manipulation of that statement because whoever created it knew and they they worked hard on creating a statement putting that was quick, put three words together that targeted a certain demographic that they knew people were going to respond to and emotionally respond to. That is an open-ended statement. If it was mm-hmm. if it was to say Black Lives Matter, also no argument. You can't argue what that means. Right. But and Black it, Lives Matter, you can argue what that means, and that's where people are getting twisted and manipulated, and it's by it's on purpose. It's true what you say about love is love as well. And I always say this, you know, when Paul speaks about the destruction that's to come, right? Mm-hmm. He says they're gonna be saying his peace. <laughs> There's gonna be saying his peace all Man. over the world, and 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 it's not the kind of peace that God gives. You know what I mean? And then he says, suddenly mm-hmm. that's when the destruction's gonna come on the world. You know, the earth, and you know, the Lord's gonna come back. And I feel like that's what it is. It's like this false idea of peace, oh my God. This false idea of love. This you know, people are goes. they'll accept the lie. They're they're accepting a lie. I, I was working with at a middle school, and it was a young girl. And we were talking and her and I were kind of bonding. She, the situation is she was a young girl. She was 14, uh, 14 years old. She's seventh grader. She was a model, beautiful young girl getting picked on by the boys. They liked her and they didn't understand how to talk to her. So they would, they were inappropriate. So I literally had to protect her and like sit her in front of me and have conversations with her. So she's, you know, one of the, I don't know if you call it millennial being 14, but anyway, she has that mindset. So one day over the course of, couple months after, you know, her realizing she can trust me. So she asked me, what are you, how do you feel about sexism? I said, what? And she said, how do you feel about sexism? I said, uh, it's bad. And she goes, good boy. Good job. Like, good I, like there's a possibility that I was going to say it was wrong, but then I got her. I said, sweetheart, you know, sexism does not only apply to women. Right. And she didn't know what to say. She's like, wait, what? Wait, what? No. That does not compute because I was programmed that sexism <laughs> only affects women. Danger, Mr. Robinson. It. Danger. Right. You see, right. So what you were saying, the the lie, people will accept the lie and make it become the truth. The you know, I'm I'm not want to go too far into the you know whole gender analysis and all of that stuff, but you get what right. I'm saying. Yeah. You know, science proves one thing, but ideology suggests another. Right. And the way I see it, you know, if someone feels like they're a gender outside of male and female, cool. I don't agree, but hey, it's all good. I'm gonna if you know if you're on fire, guess what I'm gonna do? Put you out. 
If somebody <laughs> had a gun to you, guess what I'm going to do? Jump in front of the bullet, regardless mm-hmm. of what you think your gender is. I'm still going to try to help you save you. You in the water, I'm going to jump in to save you. And I can't swim. <laughs> and I'm not going to stop and say, hey, wait, what's your gender? Do you see what I'm saying? Right, right, right. right. What, what, what matters at the end of the day? Humanity and our relationship with, with our creator, not right. our earthly ID, identity politics. Right. Yeah. Good That's stuff, big. man. Uh, so, it's CHH, right? <laughs> oh. oh. We've been having... Uh, we 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 heard you spit your control verse, right? Oh, well, we boy. first heard you on <laughs> we first heard you on Dayton's track, right? On uh, oh man, dead, right? And yeah. everybody was applauding you, and they're like, "Yeah, that that's that dude. He's the man." Oh right? man! And then you came out with the control verse. So yeah. I guess the question is, what was behind the control verse? What was okay. the 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 idea or the thinking behind? Okay. You know, wrote it like was it to get at artists was it to big right, up artists right. were you salty right. about something was it you know right. what i mean so let's that's get into a wonderful that. question fair question too great and this is honestly my first time discussing the control verse Woo! so y'all got the exclusive bro boom, exclusive. Boom, boom, boom. breaking news <laughs> <laughs> we need some sound effects guys <laughs> right right <laughs> what's that joe button they got the the put little push the button on the laptop yeah, yeah, with a gunshot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drop one, uh, drop one of uh, clues bombs. Clues bombs. <laughs> <laughs> clues bombs. <laughs> no, bro. Hey, uh, so the cont- that yeah. verse was dope. I oh, mean, the man. song was hey, dope. Man, we I appreciated that, that, man. Hey, much. I, I was much like, love. yo, this dude went in, man. <laughs> oh, man. I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. You so could, the control verse was actually my son's idea. <laughs> it was actually my son's idea. Uh, my son. <laughs> Uh, Tye, he he he's he's starting to rap, but he produces, and uh, he actually plays. He was running back for Ball State University, big number thirty. Okay. Eight. Oh wow! But uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, shout out to my baby boy. And um, so with the verse with Dayton, um, that was a dream come true because Dayton is one of my favorite rappers, like of all time. Like no lie, that's wow. a thousand wow. percent true. I, and nope. yeah. yeah, bro, like so, I had already been. A fan of GOM, and I got hit the GOM back in like 2010 with the uh, Who Is Mark James mixtapes with Bumps, you know Bumps. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I discovered Bizzle. Crazy enough, I discovered Bizzle through listening to, to Bumps. And um, then when I did heard interviews and you know saw Bump, you know Bizzle's freestyles, you know what I'm saying when he was going at the main rappers, and I started hearing the story like, oh, Bizzle is the one that owns Got Over Money because mm. I saw the logo everywhere, right? Right, right. And um, so I just was always a fan and, you know, more and more, you know, fan, more and more fan over the years. And then all of a sudden I hear this song called Hallelujah All Day. I'm like, this is the perfect Christian rap song. <laughs> like, in my opinion, it's right, the right. perfect Christian hip hop song. Like, every, like the beat is dumb. That was the anthem was, right there. Yeah. Any, uh, any Christian, uh, Hallelujah All Day. <laughs> all day, right. The hook was perfect. Like, just... I'm like, this dude is spitting, spitting. Like, who is this? Who's, who's this Dayton dude, right? I'm like, if this how G.O.M. is coming, right. that's where I want to be. That's and where I It was I aggressive, too. It wasn't like on some, Man. like, Sing corny song. soft. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was, like, real aggressive and praising the Lord. And, and praising the Lord, yeah. right? Like, yeah. come on. And he was saying stuff that, they, that right. Christian rappers are scared to say. He was right. saying it. So I was like, oh, yeah, this dude. This. So I posted a video and to, I'll get to the, the control verse, but I posted a video in 2016 in my ex-girlfriend's car I me jamming out to Hallelujah All Day. Like, I don't know who this dude is, but right. this is disgusting. And, and you're not rapping like, at the time? To it. I was, I was. Okay. And I had actually was, I was like completely independent doing it by myself, like releasing, um, I, like was it was a 2016, I think I released like four projects okay. <laughs> that nobody heard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yo, you but yeah, grinding. So you was on the grind. <laughs> grinding, bro. Like, like push your T. Right. And so, and then he, he responded to it. And I was like, oh, this dude is humble. So we started chopping it. And then we ended up, you know, really connecting. And then he invited me to come out to um to their tour in 2017, one of their tour stops in, or- in Orlando. So I got to meet him, got to meet Bizzle, man, got to meet Seven, got to meet Ishan, Illuminate, got to meet God, so many people, man. Like, so many more people too. I got to meet like people I've been listening to, right? And you know, like, whoa, this is this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be. 
And we just kept chopping, kept chopping. He just kept giving me advice like, yo, you know, try this, do this, try this, do that. Um, so then when the opportunity came to do back in the ring, I was like, oh, man. Here we go. He was like, yo, he was like, yo, I need you to come with it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm coming with it. So I need you to come with it. Like, you got to really bring it. <laughs> I was like, I get what you're saying. I get what I, you're saying. I hear that. I hear that in a I GOM. They they be sending uh warnings like listen man you better come correct man <laughs> and, and I loved I saw that I saw that with with, with Selah man and shout out to Selah man yeah he's a real one like I can't man Selah's a real deal Holyfield real one for real um, <laughs> yeah so yeah and he you know I was like all right I got you so he's like I need you to come with the Maltese come with you know I need you to come with like a battle verse I'm like all right word and I sent it to him and, and he loved it he's like that's what I was looking for. So fast forward back to this control verse, I dropped uh, my second mixtape this year. Um, and my son was like, yo, we need to do a control verse. I'm like, oh, that's dangerous. That's risky. <laughs> he's like, no, he's a pops. Like, you got people's attention with the dating joint. Like, you need to do a control verse. I was like, uh. So I thought about it. And so I went on ahead, recorded it. And, I, and I, the original version of it, actually, my son has a verse on the control verse. He okay. was like, yo, Pops, I'm going to get at you. I'm going to get you. So he he did his verse, you know, oh, whatever. So that's so why it. you said that line. I'm going to spank my line. son. Okay. My son too. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, said, like, <laughs> I was like, all right. So he's like, so he was like, Pops, don't get washed. Don't get washed. I'm like, uh, I have to not only wash the dishes, wash your clothes and your behind. Like, I've been washing you. Stop. Right. So that's why I said that line. Yeah, yeah. But he, original version, he has a verse on it. Um, well, you going to so drop that? His verse? Yeah. I might do that. Hold on, hold on. When, he, when he see this, he'll be like, yo, Pops, see, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we already know, to that. I already know. Yeah. Um, but it's like one of his first verses, but it's dope, though. He, yeah. You know, he, he, he coming with it. But he's on yeah. the second mixtape. Like, he actually rapped on the second mixtape. But okay. So, like, the idea behind the control verse, I thought about it, and I went back. And here's the crazy thing. I've never actually heard the entire song. I only heard Kendrick's verse. And that's mm -hmm. it. Like all these years later, that's what I only heard Kendrick. That, that's the only person that really matters, anyway. Yeah, I mean, no disrespect, but when I finally heard the whole song, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I see why it's called the Control Kendrick Control Verse." Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and everybody was dope on it. But I mean, you know, so I listened to it, listened to it, studied it, listened to it, and what I like to do with my freestyles is I'll mirror the flow and the and the and the pattern. And sometimes the cadence of whoever's song it is, but I'll flip the lyrics, you know, obviously making Christian and flip them in it and add bars to it, add some punches right. or whatever. But like, that's kind of like the gimmick, if you will, whatever. And, but I'll pick certain songs that have a really distinct, uh, you know, rhyme pattern to it or whatever, like tech nine joints is just, that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But and then the idea with the mixtapes was I, I picked just crazy different types of songs in hip hop and then and it just kill them to show that I'm versatile. Yeah. So with this one, I'm listening to it. I'm like, all right, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? How am I going to do this? So I kind of mimicked Kendrick's verse and mimicked the energy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I figured, all right, I'm going to drop all of the illest Christian hip hop artists, like the illest lyricists. I didn't even catch all of them. Like I, right. I forgot mouthpiece was a monster. Like there's so many, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, man, he gets a like, lot of respect I, too. He, gets, bro, he I deserves hear lot, it. Man. I hear a lot of big names mention him all the oh, time. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Mouthpiece is disgusting. Like there's so many, like so many, like it's so many in the name, but so the idea was to call them out without calling them out. Like, right. you know, fighting without fighting. Right. Or Bruce Leroy fighting without knowing how to fight, but um, <laughs> if you if you know what I'm talking about, you as old as I am. <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> you you got the last go. dragon, boy. You you know, go. uh, so, I like what we were talking about earlier with how the clever wordplay on how to manipulate masses. Like, like I said, I, I pick up on that stuff. So the idea was, I knew that people were going to immediately think I was dissing their favorite artists. And then the, the super evangelicals and be like, how does that glorify God? Uh, mm -hmm. Blah, 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 which much respect, you know, but then the less you know, evangelicals, you know, casual Christian hip hop fans will be like, whoa, bro, you just my favorite rapper. This is trash. Just because <laughs> yeah. you said my favorite rappers, not listening right. to the wordplay right. and, right. and dissecting like, 
like there's so I said so much in that freestyle, like some political stuff. Like yep. that, people yep. don't even realize. I said the earth is flat in that freestyle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I missed that. Yeah. Everybody no, missed that. that. I caught it. Oh, you caught that? Yeah, I like I said, the earth is flat. Everybody missed that. I'm like, how yeah. wait? That's the most controversial thing in the whole verse. Y'all missed that. Right. But and and it, and it was a dumb punchline. So I'm almost mad they missed that. That punch is <laughs> dumb. I'm proud of myself for that. Anyway, I'm just playing. <laughs> no, I'm playing. I'm kidding. And I'm that's kidding. the thing. No. I heard I heard it and I was, you know, and I was talking to a friend and I he was like, yeah. Oh, is he trying to dis I'm like, no, he's yeah. if you listen to the verse, you listen to it. Is yeah. he yeah. saying I what I got was listen, I appreciate these rappers, I appreciate mm-hmm. these these brothers, they're doing their thing for the Lord or musically mm-hmm. or whatever it may be. And but I could keep up with them. Right. That's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. That's and it was, it was it was it was right. And I knew people well when when Tech Nine so the whole Andy Minio thing. So when when the Andy Minio verse, I did the freestyle, and then it just blew up. When Tech Nine reposted it, then it just went disgusting to the moon. Yeah, and I started saying, "In the, oh, appreciate, yeah, much love." Like, bro, Tech Nine, but I'm wow. Anyway, yeah, he reposted. So, I seen he commented on your on your on your yeah. on your post bro, as well. So we, you guys got a relationship or or. I don't know, man. I mean, I mean, it's one of them things. Of like, you like one more comment. I'm, I'm gonna like, need that one verse. More, <laughs> one more comment, bro. We best friends. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, but no. So when he did that, and that you know, and the Andy Mendio joint happened, I was like, okay, something like God is doing some stuff, man. Right. So I been had the verse recorded. I just was like, when is the time to put it out? So I got some real good advice. I actually went to date and I'm like, yo, what you think of this, man? Because I told him, like, your name is in this. Like, do you think these dudes will be sensitive about it? He's like, some of them might, but the more they hear it, you know, they'll they'll be like, all right. And they'll be able to talk to other brothers that they know right. in the game. And be like, yeah, this dude is, you know, it's legit. He's not dissing nobody. Like, He's not being uh, disrespectful. But he was like, yo, now's not the time. When I first did it months ago, he's like, now ain't the time for it. So mm-hmm. I was like, all right, I'm going to sit on it. I wasn't going to do nothing with it. Then after the Andy Mineo joint, he hit me. He was like, now. Now. <laughs> drop it now. Because <laughs> everybody commented on that Tech 9. My brother Lecrae was in that joint. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. everybody was in there commenting. I'm like, everybody watching. Now right. it's time to drop it. Right. And so, I knew it was going to be polarizing. But you know, Were, were but, you already sitting on the video? No. So we you had, so a, rush, we, you um, had a rush of video? When he no, said no, drop we, it? no, we didn't. No, no, we didn't rush it. Like we, so we, we like my with me, just me and strong life. We can shoot. We shoot fast. Like we'll, yeah. we'll we'll get it done in a day. We've been working together for the last couple of years, and we'll like, you know, shoot it, and we'll spend hours shooting just me and him, and then he'll go edit that joint, and it's done. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, we we can have that done quickly, and we can we you know we kind of came with an idea, but like the idea further with the with the verses, I knew people when they saw the comment, when I saw the comments in Tech Nine when he reposted it, I was surprised how many people recognized me from WWE. I'm mm-hmm. like, that's crazy. I had my face covering my, my hat covering my face. Like how people, how would people even know, you know, unless they clicked on my profile, I guess. And even still, I don't post a lot of wrestling stuff. So I'm like, people still right. remember that. So I'm like, all right, that's dope. Cause so from, a, even from a wrestling perspective, that's the wrestling persona, you know, right. cutting the promo. Like, Let me tell you something, brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> but so I'm like, all right, people will get it once they like really digest it and like do some homework and then, you know, talk and then listen and talk and listen to other people. They'll eventually really, really get what I was doing. Right. And, and now, the real hip hop heads, go ahead. Did you want a response? Like, did you want to like engage in some kind of. Ah, uh, no, no. I mean, I don't care, honestly. Like, I've talked to a one or two people I've talked to him. Yeah. And and you know, and and it was like, yo, you want me to get in my bag? I'm like, yo, yes, yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> Sailor, like, Sailor, had, Sailor had mentioned that he he had a verse, right? I saw that. And he was ready, yeah. and he was ready to drop. And he was like, he's like, yo, I really respect Monster Tov. I wanted to show him that respect back. And right, he was that's like, so dope, I was ready, man. I was ready to do it. But then you know, yeah. they were like, nah, chill. They you know, like, chill. yeah, yeah. 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 Like, let let that dude live. Let him live. Sailor yeah. <laughs> even, even mentioned that he was like, yo, I think CHH needs. This like this type of right. like, That's aggressiveness, true. And, like back and forth type of thing. But what not, you, you think know about what? that? Yeah. I agree with that one hundred percent. Maybe not necessarily back and forth. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I disagree with that part of it because I do agree with it. But you know, maybe just that some excitement, man. Some excitement, something 
to get people talking, some conversation that's fun and lighthearted, but still, um, I, I, I keep throwing around the word polarizing, but something that, you know, that creates conversation, right? Right. And, you know, that verse, everything is so complex. There's so many, so much in that verse and so much about that verse that it created so much conversation in a short amount of time that I, I thought it was great. It was healthy. And, I, and I'm glad people are seeing that. Like, right. and it, it honestly, furthermore, it shows that the names of the people I mentioned, they're, they're so they're confident. They know what they can do. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're humble. They're men of God, 100%. But they also know that they're some killer lyricists. Right. 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 Straight up. Like, and that's why I said the names I said, right. you know, in particular, and unfortunately I couldn't name everybody, you know what I'm saying? But like, I, I had to fit it in the rhyme scheme and okay. even like, you know, and, and I don't take a person who was like, he's trash, he's trash. I'm like, all right, cool. I guess because it's yeah, not we auto-tune. Some, some comments like people never that. rap before. <laughs> yeah, man. I I don't, just, that don't bother me. I was just about to say that, but they probably said it because yeah. they was mad because of who you mentioned. Or who I mentioned, yeah. But but I mentioned, yeah, go ahead. But say like, but say like you know, he, he mentioned that too because he was like, people are just outright just saying it's trash, but they didn't just really because. listen to it. But he yeah. also said... That's when he said, yo, this dude can rap. And like, what qualifies dope, you to man. say yeah, that this yeah. dude can't rap? So I don't he know if you saw him say that. Nine. I mean, right. <laughs> right. He's, he's not going to listen to you. He's going to listen to you or Tech bro. Nine. Right, right, right. He's not like, reposting any bums. <laughs> bro, he don't, man, he don't repost nobody unless you his artist. Like, that's, that's a yeah. first. Yeah. And if you listen to any Tech Nine interview, and I'm, I'm a huge Tech Nine fan. Always have been. Wow. And if you listen to any, oh yeah, yeah. So that was big for me. Like that's yeah. that's humongous. And if you listen to a techno interview, you can tell he's well aware that he's one of the greatest rappers of all time. You can mm-hmm. tell. But <laughs> hey, who who gonna stop him? Who who gonna be mad at him for? Who gonna stop him? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he's not even like arrogant, and cocky. He just he just knows. Like nah, I, I know I'm one of the ghosts. I know. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And you know, with with the artist, you know, who I name, like. I, I saw a couple comments and people were like, yeah, the beat was whack, man. The beat didn't get the beat was whack. And I'm like, wait, y'all thought that's an original beat? That shows that you don't right, know what you're right. talking about. Like, they don't even know beat. that that was, that was that was the control verse. Like, they don't even know nothing. They Bruh, have no context so, whatsoever. No, and, and here's where it gets deeper. So the second verse is actually new. Like the first verse I had, all right, was sitting on. I added the second verse right before I released it. Mm. So then I thought, I'm like, all right, what am I going to do with the second verse? So I went to the Kendrick freestyle, the Kendrick uh, BET Cypher freestyle, where he dissed Drake and dissed, uh, I want to say it's allegedly dissed Papoose, but dissed Drake. And uh, what he's doing is like, uh, I took the sensitive rapper back in his something, something, something. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I basically took the structure of that freestyle and made the second verse. So like, if you go back to listen to that Kendrick freestyle and then listen to the second verse, you'd be like, I see what he did there. Mm-hmm. Like, so I, ju- I just mimicked the pattern basically right, but then right. but you know changed it or whatever but i do that as a tribute to the original or you know to it was a tribute to kendrick right kendrick, you know right. what i'm saying and yeah so like and, and in all honesty it really was really also a tribute to you know the brothers names i mentioned because they taught me how to do this you know mm. i did quite a scale i've been doing music for 20 years I had a recording contract in 2001. It was an indie contract up in Ohio, 2001. And I was a secular rapper, but, you know, it it didn't work out. And I had had some close calls, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, some real close calls, actually. But, you know, then I got into wrestling and I was playing sports and all of that. And then music kind of took a backseat until 2010 when I rededicated my life to the Lord and then dedicated my music to him, you know. And in 2010, that's when I first started listening to CAJH for real. And God, the first I found, uh, I was just searching and I found um, 777, uh, some market of peace. Uh, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Dwayne Trial. If you oh, never yeah, heard Dwayne, yeah, bro, UK, right? He's from UK. UK. Yeah, UK yeah. Dwayne Trial is one of the dopest CHH MCs ever. Like, I, I will say that. Like, like, if you listen to that album, the way that dude was rapping was futuristic, man. Like, he was his, his punches, yeah. his, his wordplay, his patterns. Maltese, like just the way he was, he was floating on some of them beats. Like, mm-hmm. dude was dumb. And um, pro redemption, Derek Minor. And I'm listening. I'm like, yo, this dude is kind of gangster. Like, wait, this what Christian rap sound like? <laughs> and it just, and those are the first two albums I found. Right. And from there, 
I found Rebel. That was like right when Lecrae. No, what did I find? Was it Rebel? Not Rebel. Not Rebel. Not Rebel. Um, Real talk. No rehab. 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 Oh rehab. rehab. Okay. Yeah, I found Rehab, and I'm like, what is this? Lecrae. Who is Lecrae? So I'm listening. I'm like. Mind blown when I first rehab, mind was blown. And then you found out went, about the whole community right after that. <laughs> it's bruh, like, oh, man, it just <laughs> on and on and on. That's when I, you know, found Bumps and and Bizzle and man and and so many like I, I just I was just searching my I got like two iPads just iPods full of like Christian hip hop from like 2010 to like 2015. You know what I'm saying? Just wow. er, I mean everybody from so, like yeah, slam ambassador. I know. I know that in 2010 Bruh. you said you said you re you rededicated your life. Um, yes. So what was that transition? Were you still wrestling at that time? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. give us a little background of the I guess the wrestling business and I guess right, the right. pros and the cons or the things that you saw because obviously there must have been something that pushed you back to say I got to get recommitted. <laughs> <There was. laughs> this ain't the life I want to live. <laughs> there was so my mother was. My my gimmick, you know, Michael Tarver, the WWE wrestler, the son of a preacher and a prize fighter. It's true. My mother was really a minister. My father was a pro boxer. He was Mike Tyson's sparring partner. Wow. Like that's all true. Um, so I grew up in a church. So I knew God, but didn't know God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had a lot of stuff happen over the course of life. Got married, got divorced, fell away from God, stopped going to church, got mad at God, went through that whole rebellious stage and all of that. Got my, you know, I was homeless in 2005. Just, just, I went through some hell. Ended up getting a contract with WWE, homeless, like assigned the contract, wow. homeless, literally. Wow. And bro, like, yeah, it's it's so deep. Like, I literally, I moved to Florida from Ohio, from Akron, Ohio. Hey, LBJ. LBJ. <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, I'm originally, I'm from Cleveland, originally from Cleveland, but I, I lived in, lived in Akron. I grew up in Kent, Ohio, but I lived in Akron for a long time. Yo, yo, yo. Um, yeah. So they, this all in the same. Oh, you, uh, cut, all right, cut his mic. Now. Cut <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't saying I'm a LeBron. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm just, know, I'm like I'm, a LeBron, nah, but, you know, you know. Um, I'm a LeBron yeah. hater. I might as well wear a shirt. LeBron hater right here. Mm, nah, I can't do that. Yeah. Nah, nah. That's, nah, all nah. that's all good. Hey, Jay's voice got too high pitched for me. We got to cry. Right, right, right. Oh, no. <laughs> No, nah. let's about Kenny. Is still the goat. I'm with <laughs> Michael Jordan is still the goat. Let's go. There you go. There and that's the dude right. Jordan, I love LeBron James. This man's anointed. Is still the this man's anointed hey. right here. Man. Bro, you know, <laughs> hey, hallelujah all day. <laughs> <laughs> but, nah, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. So I signed my contract. Uh, I moved to Florida uh, the week before WrestleMania 24. WrestleMania 24. In 2008, and it was here in Orlando at the Citrus Bowl. The week before that, I was sleep. I was couch surfing. The week before that, I was wow. literally homeless, sleeping on somebody else's couch. So, and, so were you wrestling ahead. like like underground wrestling kind of thing? Yes. Like was it? Yes. Okay. Like local. So I, I wrestled on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I broke into the wrestling business in 2004, um, in Northeast Ohio, in Akron, Ohio, and and you know got. Got some success pretty quick. Had some some good brothers of mine that took me under their wing and trained me. They saw that I had potential, and you know I started traveling around the Midwest, like from like Philly all the way to Wisconsin, just just doing shows every weekend, just driving, doing shows, making nothing, <laughs> but wow. driving, doing shows just for the you love of wrestling. Yeah, that's how it starts, you know, which yeah. is horrible because you really, really dangerously putting your body on the line for literal peanuts. And when I say it's embarrassing, when I t- like I have literally. I have driven, I drove to Philly to wrestle for $75. Wow. <laughs> Bruh, like eight hours that, to Philly. And all that went to gas, right? <laughs> gas went and food. Gas and cheese steak. Like, man. No, no cheese bro, steak. We, <laughs> eight hour drive, bro. They don't eight, eight, one steak. way, one way. <laughs> one man, way. look, we, we drove to Philly one time, a few times, but like we would drive, it'd be four or five of us in a car. And we would get a Roach Motel. When I say Roach Motel, I really mean Roach Literally. Motel. Like yeah. the kind of joint that you don't peel back the cover on the bed. It's got blood in 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 the uh in the in the tub in the bathroom. Wow. Like yeah. that you sleep in your coat, your winter coat. And <laughs> the joints that cost like twenty dollars. You know wow. what I'm saying? Like and we we would just sleep on the floor in our coats freezing, you know what I'm saying? And but that was a sacrifice, you know, that that's what I had to do. And but yeah, when I got that contract, man. 
it was crazy, man. Like, so I was homeless, and a week later, I was in the main event of WrestleMania. Wow. And I remember um, standing behind the Citrus Bowl, this fireworks going, like 80,000 people there, and I'm talking to Umaga and Rey Mysterio. And they okay. were, you know, I was introducing myself to them, and, you know, rest in peace, Umaga, Big Oos. But, like, I was, I was talking to them. I was in tears, like, falling in tears. Like, I can't believe I'm here. Like, y'all don't understand. I was homeless last week you know what i'm saying like this is just the biggest this even be standing here talking to y'all like i grew up watching y'all like and they was just like yeah. okay this dude he hungry he appreciates yeah. this you know what i'm saying then i went and shook rick flair's hand right after his match just with gonna ask that i was just gonna ask uh, that <laughs> bro we were right after him. we were up right after him. you know what wow. i'm saying it, like it was it was them and then i think undertaker and edge was like either right after us or something like that we were right after Shawn michaels and rick flair if i remember correctly and i remember walking yeah. up to him with tears in my eyes and said, I just shook his hand and just said, thank you. Wow. wow. So yeah. now you, you were, you were, when you say we, you got, you was in a group, right? I, I was re- yeah. doing some research called next. Cause I, right. I'm a big, I'm a big WWF fan or WWE fan. Right. Right. For right. years. And then I yeah. dropped off after a while I grew up and I was just like, oh, me nah, too. I'm not watching this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like some of the newer wrestlers, I'm like, I don't, I don't, you know, I can't even, I can't even yeah, tell people. The crossfitters. <laughs> but so now you you guys came in as a group and got a contract or was it like you got a contract and then they put you in and they put you guys with the other wrestlers the, the next right nexus called. so what it was was when i got signed typically when anyone gets signed to wwe for the for the most part unless you're like aj styles or somebody whatever you go to develop you go to developmental first and you'll be under contract with wwe grinding two years before anybody ever knows your name or even knows you were signed unless they know you from where you're from. So, so I it's like D league, D league type of thing. Basically. Yeah. Basically. Okay. Yeah. And so they have a school where they train you and, you know, hone your, hone your, on your craft, work on your gear, work on your gimmick, work on your promos and just prepare you for TV basically. Mm-hmm. And literally less than 25% of the people who get signed to developmental actually make it to TV. And then less than mm-hmm. 15% of those people, actually might actually even debut and then less than 10% of those people become stars even after they debut. Like it's, it's, they weed you out. Wow. So I was there from 2008 until 2010 before the world even knew I existed. Wow. And wow. so what happened was they, um, they created a show they called, called NXT and they came to us and like, yo, we got this idea for this new show. Uh, so we're going to, we, they didn't actually even have a name for it yet. So we got it's gonna be a reality show, and you know, it's gonna be kind of like tough enough was you're gonna each rookie, you're gonna have rookies and coaches, and it's gonna be the coaches gonna be established superstars, rookies are gonna be eight guys from developmental. This is how we're gonna debut you. So I was like, oh, like tough enough. I'm like, y'all gonna have us doing push-ups and stuff. Like, come on, man. Like, what? <laughs> so it's like, no, it's gonna be different. So I'm like, all right. So then they debuted us in February 2010, you know, as a new show, new concept. It got good ratings and all of that. And then would they end up having us do these ridiculous challenges? But, you know, because they were just basically flying by the seat of their pants because that's what they do. And, <laughs> you know, I saw you so, was beating up legends. <laughs> Y'all was we, jumping so legends. Then, <laughs> yeah. So after. So what they did was how the Nexus was born. They our season, which was the inaugural original season of NXT ended. And then they picked eight more guys from developmental, eight more, you know, established wrestlers, and then did the whole thing over again as season two. So then with season one, you know, because we were the biggest, you know, we just, we debuted, we were the first ones, whatever. They came up with these, uh, this idea to have us come out and jump John Cena. And <laughs> so, you know, we didn't actually even know about it. So here's the crazy, the wild thing about it. So I had got sent back to developmental for a couple of weeks after I, I was, I was the first person to be eliminated on the show and the show went on for like five more weeks or so, or whatever. So I'm back in developmental, like what's going on. And then they were like, all right, we need you to be in Miami for Monday night raw, or whatever, you know, the travel right. department would hit you up. And I'm like, okay, word, I'll be there. So I get there and the rest of everybody else is there. I'm like, what's going on? We didn't know all day long. So we get pulled into an office and it's Vince McMahon and, and, everybody all of the agents and producers so they're explaining to us here's what's going to go now <laughs> so in john cena and cm punk's match y'all are going to come out and destroy everything and we said <laughs> huh? everything i said no destroy everything like break cameras those cameras are like ten thousand yeah. dollar cameras and they were wow. like we everything's already been budgeted to be replaced 
you know, if you everyone's getting bonuses, like if you got to punch somebody, punch them for like you know whatever. Like, <laughs> what? that, like what? yes, like, <laughs> yeah, it was like everybody getting bonuses. Like this needs to be wow. so convincing. Yeah, it's, it's got to be real, real, like real, real. So we were like, huh? And it was like, and if you don't, if it don't, it don't come out right, you're fired. Like they was like, home. you're done. Wow. You wow. go home. Yeah, so we was like, oh in my. The face. <laughs> and, right. They said, so you're gonna tear up the ring and you're gonna tear up everything. It's never been done before. So then they walk around and hand us armbands, which became the Nexus armbands. We we're like, uh, so they told us you are never allowed to take those off. You better have those things on in the shower. If you're in the bed with your girlfriend, you better be wearing that armband. <laughs> wow. So we were like, what? It's like, do not so if you're seen in public with that thing off, somebody, you know, we call them stooges in the wrestling business, but a yeah. snitch will let us know and you, your backside is grass. Wow, so, look at that. Takashi's even before Takashi was out. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but that's how it was. So like we be pressure, in gym, right? <laughs> but but it was genius because man, let me tell you, we will be in the gym and people wouldn't know who we were, but they see that armband and be like, wait. And they run up on us and we also wasn't allowed to take pictures and do autographs. Oh really? Oh wow. Oh, really? right. Wow. Yep. So which in wrestling, you know, if you're a quote unquote a bad guy, you shouldn't anyway. Right. But that's, you know, old school psychologies, which is real right. psychology. But so we wouldn't do it. I can't tell you how many times I had mothers, I had a mother spit on me. I had to throw stuff at what? me. I had to what? Because I refused to, in front of my, my, at the time, fiance and my daughter, like oh. cussed me out with her kid <laughs> out there. You're supposed to F you bleep, 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 bleep. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I can't. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm sorry, I can't. Like I, I didn't even like be a bad guy heel to it. I just was like, I'm sorry, I can't do it. And I mean, it was genius wow. because word got around on the internet that we refused to sign people's autographs and take pictures. I remember walking into a house show in West Virginia, walking to the ring, being just rainy, trash, trash thrown. They just oh, hated man. you guys. They now. hated, and that's what. And but that was the idea. That's so I'm like everything, the way they crafted it was genius, except of who they put in charge and how it finished. But that's a whole other story. And I'm not talking about nobody in particular or anything. But, yeah. uh, you know, right. You, know, <laughs> nah, you wouldn't no, even know no who way. it is because you can't see him. Right. So, yeah. right. <laughs> that's like the Wizard of Oz, right? The guy. Right. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, he's the Wizard of Oz. But, <laughs> um, so yeah so but it, it was yeah but like <laughs> we went out and we was just beating up everybody so and then now like over the past 10 years now they've it was so successful and of course it got destroyed too fast but they took that formula of what we did and just tried to recreate it over and over and over and over, like with the shield and all of this new group retro, like it's like wrestling is so unoriginal but can be original at the same time it's so weird and even with the mask thing like people don't People like it's so funny, and I don't say this very much because I know how it comes across. But I got so much swag all over this wrestling business, people don't even realize it because mm. I kind of got buried. But the masks, people don't realize that I wasn't necessarily the first person to ever wear a half mask covering half my face. Yeah, per se. But when I did, everybody started wearing masks everywhere. Right? Mm -hmm. Roman Reigns finisher, the Superman punch. It's an MMA strike. Mm -hmm. And so I was a boxer, so my finishing was a knockout punch. So I started doing the Superman punch, you know, to keep it different from the right. big show who had a knockout punch. That's a whole another story. Um, and then all of a sudden I got released, whatever. Next thing you know, Roman Reigns is doing the Superman punch. And everybody thinks they, you know, everybody's copying that because they think they got it from him. Right. He's a cool dude. Like he knows where he got it from. He's, he's, I 100% <laughs> support Roman Reigns. He's a great dude. Yeah. But, you know, this is just, uh, you know, uh, so many things, just like people wearing masks and all of that. And and then just next, then there's another group called Undisputed. They wear armbands in NXT, <laughs> just like we did. Same colors. And and I know. So you, you got a lot of sons guys. out here. Of, yeah, <laughs> I guess you can say that. But I mean, those dudes, like, they're, they're, they're amazing wrestlers. Undisputed, they're, they're right. disgusting wrestlers. Amazing. Right. So, I, I know three of them. But So now you know, when you, when, yeah. when you, when you're wrestling, right, in the WWE, yeah. um, now I've heard wrestlers complain about their mm. the business aspect, right? Uh, <laughs> kind of like, I yeah. guess you guys are more like independent contractors than actual employees, or is that is that? <laughs> uh, that's a it's the myth and the truth. So we are independent contractors, so they we have to do our own taxes, basically. Yeah. Like okay. it's a ten ninety nine type of deal. 
Because I was told but, that you guys got to pay your hotel, you got to pay your flight. Yes. You gotta... Yeah. No, 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 no. We got to pay our own hotel and rental car. We don't pay our own flight. Own they flight. they okay. cover the flight. Yeah. Because if that if that wouldn't be possible, it wouldn't be right. possible to fly every week. And yeah, that's like when I was there, I was covering and it was a group of us. So it was actually easier to do. But then you get really savvy, too, when you're traveling because you learn how to use the Expedias and all of that. And you just don't <laughs> stay at some you know four or five star hotel. You just. You pick a decent enough hotel, get that, get that discount. Get on Groupon. <laughs> Bro, get on Groupon, right. Get that. You pick a, you know, a, a rental car, you know, place, you pick one, build a relationship, get points, you know, get airline points. And, and you do that and right. you end up saving money if you do it correctly, yeah. you know, and it got to a point where and my ex fiance, right, whatever she worked for Sheraton. So like she would actually be able to get us discounts, you know? Nice. So like I had to hustle going and it, I end up spending. I will spend about three, between three and five hundred dollars a week on rental cars and and hotels, you know. Wow. And, but I could afford it, you know. But it was still kind of wild, thinking that you know I was spending five, almost five hundred dollars a week just to go to work, you know. Right. But again, if I'm traveling the world and the country, then that's just it is what it is. But. Yeah, they pay for the flights, you know, but and, and I, from what I was told, wrestlers get paid more than we did anyway. So, yeah, but mm-hmm. yeah, so, so you're an independent you're... contractor, but, you know, you can't work for nobody else, though. No, it's it's where it's conflict. Not, not like Uber and Lyft. Uh-huh. Man. <laughs> like, like, God forbid you show up on a commercial somewhere, you know, as a WWE wrestler, you can't do it unless they give you permission to. And they only give you permission if you have favor in the office. Mm, uh, they get to determine who gets. It's a lot of, a lot of politics in there alone. Yep. So they're giving three sixty yep. deals pretty much. Bro, it's <laughs> the first three sixty deal. Right? Everything they own your name. They own the <laughs> Real. man, and they taking man, they, they taking dinner off your table. Man, yeah. I mean, it so was now, cool. it was a blessing, man. But, right. you know, but it was crazy. You lived though. your dream. You, you you were living your dream, right? Like something that one you, of them. You, yeah, one of them. One of them. My dream wasn't to be a pro wrestler like that, though. Like I grew up watching wrestling, but like my dream was to be a rapper. I was about to say, uh, what came first, the rap or the or the wrestling? Well, you said twenty years ago, right? You yeah. started rapping. So yeah, like I started. It was it was. I don't know. I guess you could say wrestling came first because I grew up wrestling. Grew up watching wrestling, like you know, with my parents. Mm, yeah. And my father was a pro athlete, you know. So I I wanted to be a pro athlete, you know. what I'm saying I, that was. Really, what I wanted to be a professional athlete. I wanted to travel for work, and but I also wanted to be a rapper. Like I was always into music. You know, my father sang, my mother sang, we sang in in church and all of that. You know, typical story. And like when I was in high school, I taught myself how to play the drums. You know, what I'm saying like it's just it's just there's a lot of things that added up to or led to what became my love for music. And I always learned things phonetically. Like I can hear something and imitate it, and mm. that's how I learned how to rap. Like I was listening to special ed and Big Daddy Kane and, and you know, mimicking their rhyme patterns and mimicking and I would hear their punchlines and then create my own punchline similar to what they and just and just write and write and write and write. And at like 15 years old, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, but like I wanted to be a professional athlete. So I guess the WWE thing was perfect uh, in that regard because I was an athlete, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I really like my heart's desire, man. I wanted to be a rapper, man. Like I just I wanted to be. Oh man! So yeah. now, in the middle of wrestling, yeah, was there a transition like while you were in the WWE, or was it after? Spiritu- was it spiritually, like, yeah, spiritually, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. So when I first moved here, I still wasn't going to church. I still wasn't really in in the church. And my ex uh, at the time, she was in church, and she was like, "You know, it's a big deal for me to go to church." So I'm like, "All right, where I go to church with you?" So we went to church at her parents' church, and it was not my kind of church. And I felt like I wouldn't get nothing out of it. So we ended up finding Crossover Church in Tampa with, you know, Pastor Tommy Urban Pastor, D. Yeah, Tommy. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, shout out to Urban D. And so we was like, all right, a hip hop church? Wait, they got a recording studio? They got, wait, what? Right. Would this <laughs> exist? This is real? Perfect. <laughs> so we so we went and I'm like, I fell in love immediately. Man, like, I went, I was like, dude, they got dudes rapping on stage? Like with the choir? Why they do that? <laughs> I fell in love. Like I'm like I can I ain't gotta dress up. I can wear my Tims and I can dress like a gangbanger if I wanted to. Like what? You know what I'm saying? 
And it was just, it was, man, it was just such a, it just, the experience was amazing. And then I ended up leaving the church. I had a, got divorced, you know, and just hadn't went through it and then just went through a whole bunch of personal stuff. But while during that time period, that was 2010, I had a spiritual awakening, which is probably like my first big one, right? Which led to the others that have happened in recent years. And so I was going through, in 2009, I was this close to debuting before Nexus, before the and NXT was even a thing. And my experience in developmental was real rough. Like it, they played mind games. I fought, kicked, scratched, like all of this, like equality, all of this stuff. Like I was going through hell back then. It wasn't on social media complaining about it, playing a victim. I was just, was just grinding because I had kids to right. take care of. Right. And I was homeless, you know, and I was older than everybody. I got signed. I was 31 years old when I got signed. And I'm uh-huh. in there hanging with 20 somethings, you know, who want to hang out all night and, drink and, and do drugs and all of that stuff. And I'm just chilling with them like, uh, you have fun with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But so there was a point where I ended up not being able to debut because I didn't have a passport. And, it, and it, one of the talent relations assistants was trying to make me feel like I was about to lose my job. And I was going crazy. Like, I can't do that. I can't go back to Ohio. I can't, I'm a, I can't, I'd be a failure. I can't, I can't, I can't. And I just started having these crazy spiritual attacks. And this before I realized what they were. And the crazy thing, I haven't told the story in a while. So this is right around Halloween. So I went and saw the movie Paranormal Activity. I don't know if y'all mm-hmm. remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I have always had this sick fascination with finding a movie that actually scares me, right? Because I never, you know, because I, I, I experienced some things growing up. You know, as a believer, we experienced things. And I had some, a lot of wild, crazy spiritual attacks mm-hmm. growing up. That, that would, mm-hmm. you probably wouldn't believe me if I told you, right? So I thought to myself, all right, if I've seen some of the things I've seen in real life, ain't no way a movie going to scare me, right? <laughs> so I went and saw this movie. Spirit. Uh, so okay, here's what happened. We go to a haunted house. Never been to a haunted house before in my life. Always wanted to go. Never went. So I finally, I went to this haunted house. No, we went and saw the movie first. Went and saw the movie first. The movie was everything that I experienced when I was a kid. I, I saw it play out on the big screen. Wow. wow. And it, it was traumatizing. Like, it was like legitimately traumatizing and i'm sitting there like like almost trembling like what what did i just do to myself what just happened you know what i'm saying and my ex looking like you're all right i'm like uh, like i didn't know what to say like i was tr- like when i saw that movie literally what what i saw in that movie i experienced as a kid like real deal like no lie and i'm like that i never had that happen before like where i actually like saw it again and it brought back memories and things that I buried, I guess I didn't realize. And I'm like, I just was overcome with so much, like flooded. And then we go to a haunted house and you know how they jump out at you and all of that. What was that? (laughs) Just It was like all of these crazy, like demonic images and all of that, you know? And then I'm like, you I'm walking nobody, through like just like I feel like someone I got did. Superman punched. You did, yeah, that's I what did. I see. <laughs> ah, so yeah, you can't this. be jumping out on this big dude, yeah, <laughs> bro. And like it was like it just I was it was literally almost like having PTSD. Like and and, mm. and you know being a soldier got PTSD at a fireworks you know show yeah, yeah, on Fourth yeah. of July. You feel what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. I'm like walking through this little house, jumping out at me, and all the imagery, and I'm like trying to hide that I'm not good. You know, for my girl at the time. And somebody jumped out at me that that one good time, and I grabbed him. I was like, "All right, it's time to go. Time to go. Time to go." Oh, <laughs> you didn't talk to him, though, did you? No, no. I just grabbed him, but I I realized like, oh, oh, oh. You know Game what I'm saying? I was like, I, I, yeah. right. Like, I gotta go. I gotta go. That led to like a that was like October 2009 into like November. That led to like a month. I didn't sleep. I, I didn't hardly eat. I, I went crazy. I didn't shave. Didn't cut my hair. Like I, I felt like I was hearing voices. I was seeing things. I was like, uh, just I was sit up at night, like just you know, just it was. I was shook, like you know what I'm saying. And then, then the talent relation dude was like, "Yo, you're about to get fired because you don't blah blah blah." And I'm like, "What the?" You know, like the enemy was really. The enemy was like, "Yeah, got him, got him, got him." Mm. And then you know, I came up with a character or whatever that was kind of born out of that situation, and that's what kind of turned the corner for me and the story of the character was that never made it to tv that they loved the name michael tarver so originally my name was tyson tarver after two boxers which is so original but they came up with that mike tyson antonio tarver Mm. that's wwe for you so i ended up losing the name tyson tarver because tyson kid debuted for the heart heart dynasty so I was like, all right so they're calling me mr tarver and that was when mr kennedy was still at wwe i'm like nah they about to call me 
you know, hot dog banana shack or something like that. You know what I'm <laughs> I come up with a name. They were good for that. Like they were real good for that. You know what I'm saying? So I was not about to be, you know, hot dog or something. So I was like, all right, let me come up with a name. So I came up with Michael, you know what I'm saying? As in Archangel Michael. So I was like, all right, Michael Tarver, you know, whatever. Then a friend of mine was having a conversation with me about the movie Crossroads. I don't know if you remember that movie, like old school with Ralph Macchio, Cry Kid story of uh, the guitar yeah. dude, Bobby Johnson or something, sold his soul to the devil at the crossroads, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why he kept, we, this dude like 19 years old too. And I'm like, what you know about that movie? So we're talking about it. And then one day I was sitting, I'll never forget, man, y'all bringing up some memories. So this is a crazy, so <laughs> I was sitting in my living room after practice, waiting on Max to get home by myself, right? And I had my laptop playing, you know, some music or whatever. And this is when I was still just really about to start diving into Christian hip hop. Um, and it had just some, just, you know, some music playing. So Lucifer, Jay-Z song, Lucifer came on and I'm Lucifer sitting there. The yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I ended up, I was washing dishes. Or something. Actually, no, I was in the kitchen washing dishes and a song came on and something came over my spirit. Like it was like, like you ever like been in a room where the AC comes on over you, like the vents over you, you feel it washed down over you. Mm-hmm. Like I physically felt something come over me and I turned and looked at the computer like almost like somebody was trying to break in the window like what in the world and it was that song playing yeah. and i stopped and i listened to it i was like my spirit just was was just messed up and i'm like okay okay wait a minute what is going on with me so i sat and i turned it off and i sat and sat and sat and i just kept thinking about the conversation about the movie and then i created the character the michael Trevor character which was angel on one shoulder devil on the other and i would do these promos where i would so what ended up happening was i went to back to back to training and dusty rose was the co- was the coach and him and i he was my mentor and i was like yo i got a new gimmick i got something just trust me let me try it he said all right cool so i pulled out one of the re- Heath slater who ended up being in the nexus i said do me a favor just stand here start talking when i start talking don't say nothing just flow with me he said okay cool so i walked up to him approached him you know kind of talking really you know really nice whatever like hey how you doing whatever blah blah you know whatever let me ask you a question you ever feel like you had an angel on one shoulder and i walk over to his other shoulder and say a devil on the other. And that would completely juxtapose my entire posture and my voice and everything. Oh, and man. then, right. So like, as if I was the angel on and the devil on his shoulder. Mm-hmm. And basically I was looking into the camera saying the things that he wanted to say to the office, basically that he couldn't say about, you know, right. how he was super talented, was getting held back, but I was saying it for him. Right, right, he was just right. standing there wow. and it was like cheat code. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And got a standing ovation. And wow. so I would pull, you know, different wrestlers. It, it got to a point where like, yo, yo, use me for that. Use me for that. Because they saw what I was doing. Right. And then the main roster, you know, office and all that, they got wind of that. And they came down and wanted to see me do it live. And I did it. And they were like with Alberto Del Rio, as a matter of fact. It was before him and I both debuted. So I did the promo with him. And they were like, my just mouths just dropped like we've never seen anything like this. And like for people who've had, you know, who've worked with The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin or whatever, to look at me and be like, we've never seen anything like this. The gimmick was dangerous because Mm -hmm. as I'm doing the gimmick, I felt there were times I would lose control when I would do the devil on the on the shoulder gimmick. I would literally lose control of what I was saying. You get into the character too much. Too much. (laughs) It was it was dangerous. Mm -hmm. So when I got on the main roster, I started experiencing things, noticing things or whatever. And some like weird, like, you know, Mason type stuff. Like, you feel for like real, you could lose real. yourself in that. Yes. Like I started noticing some stuff. And one day I was listening to uh, Dietrich Haddon, a song he had called I'm Alive. And we had just flown back to Tampa and I was standing in the baggage claim waiting on my ex. And I had my headphones on, dozens of fans, you know, trying to get autographs. And that song is playing. And I just broke into tears right there. And this is 2010, oh. like right in the middle of the airport, just like I couldn't even stop it. I'm trying to cover my face and fans ask autographs. And I started running out the door like I couldn't stop myself from crying. And I jumped in the car. She's like, what's wrong with you? I said, I don't know. I don't know. And I just was crying. And the song was just blasting. And it just resonated with me because I had a huge problem with depression. Like right before I got signed, I almost committed suicide. So mm-hmm. like it, it just was it just resonated with me. And then God was bringing all of those things together. And when that happened, that was right. All of that stuff was happening at the same time when I joined Crossover and all of that. And when I finally stopped listening to all of the secular music, and I was listening to Tech Nine heavy back then too, it was so crazy. 
But like when I just, I literally put down all my secular music, even Eminem, I'm a huge Eminem fan, just put it all down and just 100% committed to only listening to CHH. Like just, just told myself I'm flipping it 100%. And it kind of saved my life. You know what I'm saying? And so I started, introduced it to my kids. And and that's been a huge factor of my son that I mentioned who plays in Mm -hmm. college of him and him and I bonding. There's a huge factor in that. Because we listen to the same music, like he listens to Christian hip hop, and that's been a huge factor in, you know, him growing up and and becoming the young man he is, you know, man. and Praise that God. leading to where we are today, you know. I know I'm sorry, I'm a long way. That's a no. Nah, that's a that's, that's a, a big that's uh, a dope story. That's testimony. A dope yeah. story and a big shout yeah. out to CHH for those for who, yeah. who you know yeah. are skeptical or they're like, like we got to see how God uses that music, man. It, uh, he uses it for sure, man, because. Like it, it helped me further bond with my son. You know what I'm saying? Like with, you know, with my children, but like in particular my son. And I remember my father and I, you know, we grew up listening to the same music. I listened. He listened to cool music, and I liked it. He listened to Public Enemy. You know, he listened to uh, Zapp and Roger. You know, the Funkadelics. Mm-hmm. All that. I loved that music. You know what I'm saying? Right. And he he didn't listen to old school Four Tops and the Temptations, which is great. He listened right. to cool music. Right. And that music, <laughs> the, you know, it it played a part in influencing my production, like, you know, and it just, I, I saw that as very important, man. It just, one thing is I love about, I love about, one of the many things I love about CHH is that it's safe. Mm-hmm. Even if it's not the most Christian-y Christian hip hop, right? It's safe. You can play it you anywhere. Huh? You can play it anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I mean, and granted, there are some that people won't know the difference. But I'm like, you know, and there have been places where I played it with kids I work with and people are like, whoa, 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 we don't play that kind of music. I said, listen for five seconds, yeah. <laughs> take about 30 seconds and listen to what I'm playing. Right. And then, then there's that, well, we can't do anything religious. I'm like, it's not religious, uh, but there are no cuss words. There's no profanity. There's no overly sexual content. There's right, no violence. Right, right. The spirit behind and it. The spirit, mm-hmm. And the spirit behind it. But like, the, the, you know, you'll play wop because it relates to the kids you know and you want to relate to them but you don't realize you're teaching them to go have premarital sex or you know you're not to sound churchy but you're teaching them to go have sex next week and they're 14 whereas i'm just playing music that sounds like what they like to listen to they may reject it because it's not who they like but at least they're bobbing their heads to it Mm because unfortunately they're easily brainwashable Mm -hmm. you know but Man, it just it's it's grown me, changed me in so many ways, man. Listening to Dope. Bizzle, Cray, R. Swift. I remember oh, no. meeting wow, R. Swift. R. Swift. Yeah. Bro, I remember I meeting R. Swift in Atlanta, man, in 2000, I want to say 11, 2011 to 2012 at a City Tickets conference in Atlanta with Scott Free. I went with Urban D and him and I sat down and he was like, yo, you know, I, I told him what it was and everything. And he was like, man, this is what you got to do. He gave me advice. He said, do freestyles. The idea to do the freestyles, like literally the control verse, all of that came from R. Swift. Like he uh-huh. said, do freestyles. I'm like, okay, I've never done that before. He said, do them and post them. Just keep doing them, keep doing them. So I started posting freestyles to my YouTube in 2012, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And then I eventually stopped, but I just got to record them in my car and talk a little bit and then post. And, but then I finally started doing it again in 2000. 18, I had posted a freestyle to a website, a site called uh, 90 Sip Up Junkie. I don't know if y'all are familiar. Yeah. But mm-hmm. they did a contest and it was the fourth chamber beat. And you, you know, you, you, you post your freestyle or whatever they like it, they repost it to their page. When they reposted mine, I was like, oh. And I straight, the first thing I said was Christian rapper. You know, he wow. whacked your Christian rapper life. But then people listened to it like, oh, dude was fire. And so I saw it and I'm like, wait a minute, let me keep, you know, keep submitting stuff. And then I, did a verse to the uh, repara- uh, respiration beat. And that one was even better, but they didn't repost that one. So I'm like, all right, whatever. I just keep doing it myself. And they just, you know, doing re- just posting freestyles. So, over so over now with all that, what, yeah. what do you have, uh, what do you have going on now? I know you said you dropped, you dropped a few, did you drop a mixtape this year? Was it, was it two this of them? Year? Two, two of them. them. So you dropped two mixtapes. Yeah. yeah. Where they, where can the people find that at? Gotcha. So there, there's the Monster Tape 1 and 2, and uh, right there on SoundCloud and Noisetrade.com. I've really been trying to get them on that Pip. I don't know why it's hard to upload stuff to that Pip, but, you know, maybe I need a team. But now yeah, right you, now it's just on that, on uh, Noisetrade.com and uh, SoundCloud. 
and you working on an album now or you working on more mixtapes what, what, what's going on now musically both so um the monster tape three i'm you know i'm, I'm slowly working on that but yeah i'm working on the album i've recorded about 60 joints in the past wow. year wow. Album. Like, work. I've worked, work. yeah so like when in like in 2015 when i find like urban d gave me the game man in 2010 when i met him he was like yo i was like i want to sign with reach i want to sign with reach you know because i had that i'm with wwe so maybe i should get with the biggest christian hip-hop label I, mentality mm. which was yeah. misguided he was like no nah, don't yeah <laughs> He's like, no, nah, don't do that. You got to do it on your own. He showed me, told me about CD Baby and all of that. So right, I was like, look all at right. Jay, look at Jay, look, look at Jay, Jay look, look at Jay. Reach one one six hat. Look, you, he's, he's, he's on the payroll. Right there. He's he on the on payroll. Reach, he's going. He's, he's on payroll right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wasn't dissing Reach. He was just saying, like, you know, like do it on your own. You got to yeah. like, you know, yeah. So, yeah. And so he does. He does it. He's independent with his, and he's good. He's successful, you know. So I, 2015, I finally figured out how to, you know, copyright and get publishing and all of that. Yeah. Then put together, you know, a studio, you know, a little makeshift studio, whatever, and then learn how to re record myself all over again and, you know, produce all over again and then, you know, mix the best I could or whatever and then put, you know, and then release it to iTunes, all of that. And, right. And then yeah. just from that point, I was just releasing just joint after joint after That's joint dope. after joint. That's and dope. I think I would record it. I record about five or six songs a day. I would sit at home all day and just record songs. Song, wow. Song, That's dope song, work song. ethic right there. Yeah, like just, just but I was learning. Play. I was learning. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I had to learn what my voice sounded like, my cadence, where I'm comfortable, what kind of beats I'm at home with, how to use my voice, you know, how to sing, when I, how to harmonize, how to edit, how to make, th you know, make things crisp. You, you know what I'm saying? Just I had to learn. Relearn, that is. Yeah. So, so you got some so, stuff on Spotify too? I do, yes. Yeah. Okay. So they so, can find your what? Monster Tava? Well, uh, so originally my name was B2.0 and I got some good advice to change that. <laughs> but, <laughs> got some good advice to change that. But uh, so you can find music, my older music, you know, if you search B2.0 or B2.0 backslash 2.0 sound, it's a lot to say and it was a horrible name, but that was my rap name from back when I was rapping 20 years ago. So I figured I'd just stay with that. But I got some good advice to change it to M Tarver because it's close to my wrestling name. Right. Mm. And so, but yeah, so I do have stuff on Spotify. Um, if you search Monster Tarver or M Tarver, like none of my pro projects, but uh, I got a song with features. BRM features. Yeah. Um, nice. A song with BRM, uh, a song with a second Samuel on his album he just released, brother named Second Samuel. Um, we heard of him. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's my yeah. homie. And a um, uh, theme song. Uh, it's called "You Will Believe in Me" with another with a, a guitarist named John Kernan, but it's from my brother uh, PJ Black or uh, Justin Gabriel. He was in the Nexus, so I did his theme song for him, and oh, that's wow. you can find that. Yeah, so that's another thing. The theme song hustle, man. Like the wrestlers be hitting me up now. Like after that, like yo, can you uh, yeah, that's like, dope. Want some bars yeah, that's like, like, music. Okay, that commercial bag. <laughs> yeah. It's that strange. And, and be rock <laughs> beats. That's the crazy thing is they be rock beats, man. But it, with the crazy, like I, that was what I was doing was like rock rock and roll rap back in the mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. and the label i was signed to in like 2001 they didn't really understand what to do with me because i was they was like a gangster midwest gangster rap label and i was doing rock and roll rap so right. they didn't know what to do with me <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it's cool like, i'm at home with it you know yeah man well listen man we appreciate you man we're yeah. gonna drop uh hit all his links right his uh yeah. your at name on ig is monster tarver right uh, IG, Twitter, uh, my Twitter. Fan, fan page, everything, Tw uh, TikTok, all of that. I don't do Monster TikTok talk. dances though. No. So we gonna drop the link. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't on TikTok. You ain't doing those challenges. Nah, <laughs> no, I, I, if it's a rap challenge, yes, but I, I, I ain't doing no dances, my guy. Doing no <laughs> challenge. <laughs> but we appreciate you, man. You, yo, how tall are you, man? I was about to ask oh. that. Oh, I'm six three, man. Six, oh, I'm about God. to say because I think he was like. Yeah. You look like six seven, man. You know, <laughs> yeah. with me, was, what, we talking about the pick with me and Dayton. Yeah, yeah. well, that too. <laughs> yeah. Trying to say Dayton short, man. What y'all trying to say, Dayton short? Nah, man, you I mean, yo, but it, it threw me off because I, I went on YouTube right to see some of your yeah. fights, and you were fighting this giant, man. And I was like, wait, how tall is this dude? 
You know? Oh, bro. Yeah. I think I was talking about you. He's legit seven foot tall, but no, I'm six three. He made me look little, little. <laughs> yeah. That's a, yeah and I was little. like, wait, how tall is Dayton? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he going to get at me too, like, yo, yo, son. <laughs> That's the big homie, man. Shout out to Dayton, man. Shout out to Dayton. Y'all don't even know, man. Little That's big homie, money, Menace uh, Movement, and all big everybody. Menace Movement, GOM. Yeah. Uh, Bizzle, oh, for sure. the whole GOM, man. They stay coming with smoke. Yeah, we appreciate you up. and your humility, man. Oh, man. Like, a, hey, a story, like what they call it, a gentle, a gentle giant. <laughs> sure. Sure. That's yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. Well, with that being said, we want to thank everybody for listening, viewing. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you want to learn more about Monster Tavra, just hit the description or the show notes. Have all his links there, all his music, everything. And uh, thank you again. Make sure you, you copy your merch. We got some new merch at shop.thatsnotchristian.com. Make sure you copy. And uh, we'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.